Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Empty Promise Podcast. My name is Chris, and tonight I am joined by my very best friend, the whole wide world, James D. Downey. Beautiful. How y'all doing? Thank you for joining us on what is November 2nd, D. Remember, remember the 2nd of November. Yes, yeah. indeed. Uh, it is a cold, cold, wet, blustery Steamy. night. And uh, it is just fantastic to be here once again, D, in our lovely warm studio, bringing the highest quality audiomanship <laughs> to our dear, dear listeners. You're all very welcome for that. I want to say before we go on, D, and before we begin with just this world-class hour and a half of just <laughs> world-classness, um, I want to thank everybody for helping the podcast grow as of late. Um, I was talking to you before before we began, and our most recent couple of podcasts have been doing very well for themselves, mm-hmm. um, and I contribute that to, is that the right word? I contribute that there? Yep. Yep. To us just being so good. <laughs> I contribute that entirely to us. I want to thank um, everybody who has got in touch with us during the week um, from s- people sending us screenshots of them listening. Uh, I was going to say to the It's Obvious podcast, <laughs> but that's just wrong. No, listening no. to uh, an Our empty, podcast. empty Promise podcast, um, to those getting in touch with questions, um, even just those saying that they are now listening to the podcast. It means the world to us that people are actually tuning in on a weekly basis. Mm-hmm. Um, so thank you. Thank you. It's great. Thank you for it's commenting. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for making it all worthwhile. Some people have actually tagged each other in our promos, in the promo for last week for the spooktacular. Yeah. Like nobody tags people no. in our stuff. I, I, I would, I've never done it personally. Uh, I, I thank the people that have. Imagine being tagged in it, Chris. Imagine just imagine. <laughs> imagine being, opening up your yeah. Facebook and seeing like, that you're a tag in the Empty oh Promise gosh. podcast. Oh, gosh. I think it was actually under X8 Gaming's Facebook as well, mm. which I've been meaning to do something about it because you're, getting, you're gonna you're gonna wipe it out i don't know it's stagnant <laughs> at the minute you know i'm not gonna wipe it out but you're I'm gonna wipe it out <laughs> gonna yeah. clear house yeah. i haven't even been i haven't i haven't made i haven't tweeted i haven't twat in about pff, a week i have kept up with the insta story but not with the posts no so i apologize if anybody waits on a post i don't know if people wait in posts i don't wait in stories though so yeah i'm waiting for the post Chris. good okay i'll get a post up this week yeah. i don't know what to actually get up though tag me in it so then i actually go and look at it because okay. otherwise there's a otherwise. real possibility I'll never but you see won't. It. that's okay yeah i noticed that with you d that um like for a wee while there it was like every like friday or saturday it was clear like d clearly has some downtime he's checking his insta feed because <laughs> there was just like a, a backlog of like, likes like like, 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 like <laughs> all from james r94 so thank yeah. you uh, Did D- you just give away my fucking profile? Well, yeah, I gotta Son get it out there. The handles are out. Second of November, D, eighteen eighty nine, North Dakota and South Dakota become the thirty ninth and fortieth states of the USA. I was actually waiting for you to say that this North Dakota and South Dakota fight in a battle and to become who, one. Yeah, to who yeah. decides being like Dakota the, one or Dakota two? The Supreme Dakota. Who won, Chris? I don't know. Which is the better Dakota? Uh, I would probably say South. Is that the one with uh, Mount Rushmore? I don't know. North, right? No, I think that's North. No, that's South. That's South. Yeah. North very cold, I think. I mean, they're not much different. No. Well, temperature-wise, they probably are. One's north, one's south. Yeah. Um, the 32, and that's right, the 32 points of the compass is the list. Um, not going to do that. Any any highlights out of that? Uh, north, south, east, and west. <laughs> Un- unreal. Classic. Yeah. I'm not going to go with that. So I'm going to go with the 3rd of November list, which is middle names, existing and non-existent. It's just any middle name. Yeah. So in mm. America... NMN stands for no middle name. Did you know that? I did not know that. So go. if you go like, like James N M N Downey. Downey. James, no middle name, Downey. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, George Washington did not have a middle name. Now that I think about it, that's not awesome. That's pointless because you could just not give a middle name. Just not write down just, those just do, three letters. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. No, just, uh, Paul McCartney's middle name is... Paul. Yeah. What a shout. How did you know? Paul, 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 Paul. But his name is not Paul, Paul McCartney. Um, his first name is James. Oh my God! All oh, right. Okay. So instead of having James McCartney, yeah, he is Paul McCartney. First James. name James. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the J in Homer say Homer J Simpson is J. Yeah. J A Y. Yep. Doesn't stand for anything. It's just J A Y. Uh, Captain Kirk's middle name is uh, Tiberius, but in the Star Trek episode where no man has gone before, his middle initial is incorrectly shown on his tombstone as R. Is that my phone? That's your phone. Okay. <clears throat> Let's try that. R. R. Riberius Turk. Riberius. Turk. 
Uh, if he has one, the middle name of Squidward J. Tentacles, neighbor of SpongeBob SquarePants, is not currently known. Uh, despite his name, Mr. Squidward is not a squid, but an octopus, even though he doesn't appear to have the requisite eight legs. <laughs> That's perfect. Yeah. I, I, there's a lot of facts in there about Squidward I did not mm-hmm. know, and now I do, and I'm happy to know. Uh, there's, a, there's a big long one there. I'm not going to go into it. That's, that's real boring. <laughs> middle names. Like, look at the length of that other list. That's the second page of it. Are they literally just points on the compass? Points on the so compass. Like northeast. 32 points, yeah. My yeah. God. Um, can, can you fill up our day? He's, get, he's, going, he's really starting to grasp at, thro- at straws. Isn't he? Lists. Um, points on the compass. Come on, Phil. I'm burning this. Yeah, we don't need any. Oh, 10 of the world's <laughs> most famous paintings. There we go. That's the list that we're going to miss during the week. Do you want to do it now? Um, okay. Mona Lisa. Yep. Um, I'm out. No more. Uh, what do you call that one? That one, the one you know, the See one. See if you can get any more here. The 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 self portrait of Van Gogh. Mm. Is it in there? Mm, I don't know. No, probably not. Um, no. What about? There is one of. Uh, is it Van Gogh or Van Gogh? Van I don't Gogh. know. Van Gogh, I think. Yeah, we're so close. His shit. bed. What? His, his bed. No, no. We were drawing his bed. In, yeah. In, in high school. In high school, uh, it's actually called Starry Night. Oh yeah. You know that one? Yeah, it's yeah that's like possible. swirly kind of yeah. one. Um, we think of the the Ver Virtue of Man. Is that Da Vinci or is that Van Gogh? Yeah. No, no, that's that's Da Vinci. That's Da Vinci. Like yeah. a perfectly proportioned, how to draw a perfectly proportioned yeah. person. Yeah. No, it's not there. Perfectly proportioned person is a is a fun thing to say. Mm-hmm. And if we don't have pop filters on, people are going to be pissed. Yeah. <laughs> perfectly um, proportioned people are going to be. Some of the pissed. other ten. Um, the Hey Wayne Wan by John Constable. Um, no, 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 the scream, you know, the scream, oh, that, yeah, like, know, ah, yeah. that's yeah. the one that went missing for ages. And I, ages. Do you know what? We, I think we've actually brought that up in like one of our first podcasts. I remember talking about that up in the studio. That was like found or something. Mm-hmm. The go. tragedy by Pablo Picasso, uh, water lilies by Claude Monet oh, yeah. and, uh, Campbell's soup, soup cans. Oh yeah. But don't tell me his name. Oh, I can think of this. Can you? Oh yeah. A.W. Andy Warhol. There you go. You got remember, it, sir. remember doing that in art. Yep. There we go. So. I think that was that was Kevin. I think our high school our teachers would have been absolutely ashamed that we only got like two out of that list. I think they would have been astounded that we got two out of the list, <laughs> considering <laughs> we did not. That's true. Um, I'm gonna to need to take my phone back for some news. Oh god. Unless you want to talk about anything else before we do some news. Um no, Chris. I kinda said you why. Because I don't have any news. I have some, especially from last week, D. We missed out on a couple of pieces. <laughs> kind of big pieces. That's why people come to us to get the up to date news one week later. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. where they, that's where they're here. I'm gonna try holding my phone because Pardon me. Um, it's going. Da, 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 da. Don't know what that is. Why would it do that? It's cause, cause, it's cause, we're not set up right here. It's really, really annoying. Anyway, the uh, Leicester City helicopter crash. Yeah, we didn't talk much about that last week. Did that didn't happen? But it happened after. Did it? It must have been like podcast. directly after. It happened last Saturday. Sure. Oh yeah, yeah. We podcast like last what, like Thursday? Yeah. No. So we, we podcast last Wednesday. Yeah. And this happened at the weekend. That was very, very sad. Anyway, the wreckage has been removed. Uh, it was removed there during the week. Um, See, Claudio Ranieri went back to the grounds to... Yes, uh, very sad time. Sure condolences. So it was the owner of Leicester City. Yep. Yeah. Um, yep. His his helicopter after the game obviously crashed and him and four others, I think it was. Yep, five people. Uh, perished in the... Was the it like... crash? A, I was going to say like the aftermath, but it's the crash, yeah. I think it was a crash. Apparently um, the pilot did very well because he, he to was... Yeah. Saved hundreds, yeah. yeah I've seen that. That was like the front page of the... Yeah, it's a really, really sad thing, isn't it? Yeah. Did you hear though on the same day, Glenn Hoddle also collapsed in the... Yeah. In the studio. Mm-hmm. With like I didn't know what happened cardi- in the studio. Cardiac arrest. Yeah, yeah, he was he was filming for like one of those... I forget what it was. Is it like... Wouldn't have been match of the day, but one of those. Hmm. He was doing a keepy uppies. A couple of minutes later, he sat down and collapsed a cardiac arrest. God help me for laughing, but I that know. was funny. I know. Um, yeah. Well, they asked it. A bad week for uh, football. Really bad. Tragedy. Oh, the only thing I've seen about Glenn Huddle was that he was apparently minutes from death. Oh, really? Yeah. You know, like when it happened. Oh, right. I did not hear that. I think that was like a, that was like the sun or something. Like that, you know? Oh, okay. Bulls, Bulls um, headlines. But hopefully he, he makes a nice recovery. A nice recovery? A good recovery. Yeah, of course. Well, a full recovery. Um, D. Yes. Llama blood. Uh, very good for your skin. Yep. Uh, I would recommend it to anyone who's finding a bit of those early wrinkles. It's a good way to nip that in the bud. may mud. actually be speak. the clue to beating all flu. All flu? Yeah. Uh, so scientists in the US have recruited an unlikely ally in their efforts to develop a new flu treatment. Llamas have been used to produce a new antibody therapy that has the potential to work against all types of flu, including new pandemics. Well, that's good. Mm-hmm. Influenza is the ultimate shapeshifter, constantly mutating its appearance 
um, to evade our immune system. Um, There's no beating it. That's where the llama, better known for its wool, comes in. The animals produce what? incredibly tiny antibodies in comparison to our own. Antibodies are weapons of the immune system and they bind the proteins that stick out from the surface of a virus. Um, human antibodies tend to attack the tips of the proteins, uh, but that's the part influenza, influenza mutates most readily, whereas llama antibodies use their size advantage to wriggle a little bit deeper and attack the parts that the flu cannot change. Well, that's good. There Hopefully go. that works out. I hope so. The I flu mean, is like still one of the biggest killers out there, isn't it? I hope, though, it doesn't go... Uh, <clears throat> I hope they don't start like needlessly slaughtering llamas for their blood, though. I don't, I don't think that's how it works. No. Nah. No. They're already needlessly slaughtering llamas to give us meat. Are they? Yeah. Llama meat? Yeah. No one eats llama meat. Dude. Oh, they do, Chris. They, uh, people eat all kinds of meat. Emu meat is uh, really big down in, uh, in Oz. In Oz. Um, well, I wouldn't eat llama. Well, I try anything once. Well, so would I actually, but <laughs> <laughs> I killed llamas in uh, in Minecraft and I felt terrible for it. Oh, did you? They're so yeah. placid. I haven't seen them, a llama in Minecraft. It's been so long since oh, I've heard. They're so placid. They wonder about our base, the Exide uh, Hub. Emporium? Yeah, awesome. the Emporium. I forgot the name of it. How dare I? Um, D, did you hear the news that the Simpsons um, may be axing Apu Nahasapina mm, Petalon? Nahasapina Petalon. Um, because he's apparently he's a, like a, a caricature of an Indian immigrant. Yeah. Now I will we'll touch we'll touch on that in a second. I'll just read out that the um, what this uh, article from Sky News said about it. So a debate about race was sparked by a documentary about Quickie Mart owner, which said that he was a stereotypical depiction. Mm. Um, one of the Simpson original writers has said a producer who claimed Indian character of who was to be dropped does not speak for our show. Yeah, that was Al Jean. Yes, Al Jean is right. Yeah. yeah, one of the he's been one of the guys. Of the yeah, he's like one. been like the pioneer of the Simpsons since day one. Um, but Apu would not be the only person. I'm I'm not even reading this now. Apu would not be the only person that they would be stereotypical. I guess if that's the way the word towards. You see, like it's kind of like, you know, what do you allow? Like you know, the stereotypes. Obviously, that's. The one with the poo is big because you're talking about a race of people, like yeah. So that's like in Indian immigrants in America, right? But then like the Simpsons is full of caricatures, like mm. rednecks, you know, yep. Cletus, um, Cletus, um, the in- the rabbi guy, useless uh, policeman, yeah, all that, all yeah. that kind of stuff, like so, like it's kind of like why the show is so funny, like well, that's you know, it, like it's a fucking cartoon. People. It, it's not to say it's harmless, like, but a, a lot of people, a lot of Indian sort of uh, people of Indian descent in America have been saying like. Well, we don't feel like Apu is, is the bad representation of us. Like, sure, it's a caricature, but it's like, generally, Apu is like the voice of reason. He's a sensible one in these, in these like, cartoons. Like, yeah. it's the Simpsons who were crazy doing stupid things, and Apu is like a, a normal person in the yeah. madness. It'd be different if he was like, useless, and he yeah, was yeah. like, you know, really negative, uh, negatively depicted, like, but yeah. I don't know. It's kind of like, imagine if you've seen like a, you know, like, like leprechauns on like the Simpsons, and it's like, like, and it's yeah. like, yeah, that's what all Irish people are like. Yeah, exactly, yeah. It was like, it's not like, a, well, it doesn't really offend us, but it's just kind of like, that's just like a caricature. Yeah. Like, it's a, it's a cartoon depiction of That's it, like, it's a people. fucking cartoon. People need to fucking calm down, dude. I tell you what, though, some cartoons, like, Kleenex fucking tissues going off the charts and can't sell just Just because it's cartoon, Chris, doesn't mean it can't be racist, though. Well, that's true. Because, like, a lot of people were saying about, like, the, the old school, um... Warner, like the Looney Tunes, what do you call them? Speedy Gonzalez? Oh, yeah, all those like Mexican, like are Spanish people fast. I don't know, no? Mexican people. Sorry, probably, maybe he was Mexican. Probably, I don't no. know. That's it. Is that racist? I don't know. Some people are just like, Well, he's been there for so long, it's okay. Yeah, okay. I'm telling you, Chris, it's coming. Fucking There's a wave one. of change coming. D, there was a 700% surge in Wild West pornography searches from Red Dead Redemption 2 has come out it's the bull testicles Chris yeah that's it there is and this is an interesting article because I mean when do you hear about this but um, in news that probably shouldn't surprise anyone the internet has reacted to Red Dead Redemption 2 with critical acclaim horseball memes and now immense thirst it turns out <laughs> <laughs> immense thirst sexual it thirst it turns out that a bunch of you are uh, enamored with Rockstar's latest open world epic that gives you, you that you have been doing whatever you can to stay immersed in the Wild West, even if it even if it means indulging the olden days during your solo rodeos, <laughs> if you know what I mean. A seven hundred percent, no, sorry, a handy Pornhub Insights team 
have reported an eye-watering 745% surge in users searching for steamy Wild West rumps on the popular site since the release of Red Dead Redemption 2 on October 26th. That's absolutely brilliant. Does that surprise you? Not really. I mean, no. I kind of get. I kind of. It's like, it's like everything else that's come out and around uh, Red Dead is like mm-hmm. just massive numbers of of change. And it's like that doesn't surprise me. It got me it. interested, D, in other times that um, pornography searches have spiked. <laughs> sure. During, um, like during, like uh, I don't know, like that what has made it spike event, basically? Like? Um, some of which were um, presidential campaign last year, right? Not last year, Donald Trump searches pornography went through the roof. Um, oh, that's because they claim videos of him. In mm-hmm. there. I bet you there was royal stuff happened whenever the royal wedding. Exactly, and with the baby. What? Which is, remember whenever she fell pregnant? Yeah. Um, yeah, that that was searched for a lot. Um, what else? Uh, Rick and Morty is massive. <laughs> o- Overwatch is massive. Oh, that doesn't surprise me. Any kind of cartoon um, seems to be pretty big right now. Um, let me think. What else? I had I had someone here. I don't know. But then that leads me into my next bit. These are um, four sexual behaviors that have become oddly common in public. Sexual behaviors? Yeah, sexual behaviors. Um, people are constantly filming smut in libraries. Oh, right. This okay. has been reported. Um, the library is a kind of inherently sexy place. <laughs> yes. 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 All those books that maybe describes boobs. That's hot, but whereas I can look at a book of full of boobs and appreciate it for the literature that is, it seems that some people become inflamed with uncontrollable lust. Do you know what this is, Chris? What's that? This is this is just the adult version of bogeys. Yeah. You know, dick and dumb bogeys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, you're yeah. not supposed to speak loud in the library. No. So you play bogeys and you yeah. shout, right? Yeah, exactly. This is you're not supposed to get naked in the library. <laughs> so what are we going to do? <laughs> We're going to get naked, naked in, in the, the library. library. Yeah. Um, do you know that firehouses need security cameras to stop all of the on-call sex happening? What? Yeah, it's fire. The, so you know firehouses. It's the pole. It's the pole. It's, it's the, the pole. fireman's pole. There's yeah. just something inherently sexy about a fucking pole. <laughs> All right, strippers have them. It's a good job. I didn't Firemen get that have them. pole inserted here. <laughs> I'm still. I'm gonna get that fucking pole. Um, so apparently, yeah, they've had to install cameras in like ninety percent of uh, um, like fire stations. Is that what they're called? Mm. Firehouses. I don't know. Um, because because of this, because of on call sex happening uh, between firemen and women. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Here's one for you as well, kind of related. What about the on call room in like a hospital? Exactly, that's bound to be used for more than just being on call. Yeah, yeah. On uh-huh. call. Uh-huh. Um, some cities now just let you bang in public. Do you know that? They let you. Yeah, they let you. Um, let me see. The it's town be of in Europe, um, isn't it? I'm gonna butcher this name, but Guadalajara in Mexico opted oh. to make the whole city a humptastical wonderland of the. De- Debauchery. Debauchery. Um, because they felt like the cops should focus more on real crimes than harassing people who couldn't afford afford hotels. Was 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 it was there so many people having sex in public that the police were feeling like overwhelmed? Feeling crimes. Well, well they were feeling insane. to to get the main crimes basically. They were too busy <laughs> arresting people having sex in public. It's probably um, like a fucking tourist thing. It's like come here to the city of sex. Yeah. Well, I said as long as no one files a formal complaint, you're free to plug any orifices you like Plug whenever you like that meanwhile is. in amsterdam you may be surprised to learn that public sex is actually not legal anywhere in town instead there is a place called uh vondel park did you the, know this? the red light district no it's um it's an actual park oh my god yeah. right. and um it's where all the fresh air loving dutch deviants can go to get busy under the sun the rules here are similar to that town in mexico and that the government would like you to maybe spare a glance around to ensure that there's no kids in the area oh, yeah, but yeah. after that you're free to to do whatever the hell you want um a fun side note though it's still illegal to have your dog off the leash in the park but if it's on the leash it can totally watch you get real by the river <laughs> Well, Chris, you, have, you have to re- retain some semblance of humanity. You can't <laughs> well, that's just let the dog like, off yeah. the leash. Like. Um, yes, that was that was some of my uh, stupid news for this week. Um, Your news very, very um, influenced by sex this week, Well, Chris. yeah, I mean, I, once I heard that about uh, Red Dead, I was just like, what the fuck is this? So, Speaking of Red Dead. Yes. Have you, have, you, have you boarded the hype train, Chris? Of course I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> no, nor have I, actually. Um, D... When I heard, when, when I realized Red Dead was only a matter of, uh, you know, it had gone gold at that point mm-hmm, and it was just mm-hmm. coming out, I took back into Breath of the Wild. <laughs> <laughs> Get really what immersed I in a nice open no, world. No, I, um, I, I have not immersed myself in the world. Well, have Chris, you? most other people have. It is now the second biggest entertainment opening weekend ever. 
So it's made the most money out of any entertainment product in like three days. What's number two and one? It's number two. Number one. Oh, what's is number one? GTA. GTA Five. Fuck. So what's yeah. number three? Don't know. I want to say Avatar. I'd, I'd like. I wish you had done your research on this one. Oh, for fuck's sake! These are the things I like to know. <laughs> you know? You're a fan of lists. I, I'm pretty sure it would be Avatar, or maybe um, some kind of Star Wars. Yeah, maybe, yeah, it could be. Force I could, Awakens. I could maybe? see that maybe happening after so long. I don't know. Um, I don't know. But yeah, it's absolutely massive. It's getting unbelievable scores. Mm-hmm. It was on a 99. A Metacritic on the first day. I've seen that. A Metacritic does not hand out 99s. No, it's tough to get a high score on Metacritic. Holy shit. Uh, it's come down since then. I'm not actually sure what it's at now. Sorry, Chris. Don't 98. fucking bite my head off. Um, yeah, probably a 98. But it's doing extremely well. But I'm not playing it. Nope. <laughs> Will um, you play it? Probably probably eventually. Yeah. yeah. Um, Is it in the backlog? I've heard that it's a very sl- intentionally slow-paced game. Oh, to really? To immerse you. So, you know. Apparently. Mm. Apparently people have issues with that. And I can, I can, I can relate to that. Mm. I think you need to be in the right mood to play. From this what game. I've heard, um, it's predominantly good. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, great things about it. Um, I've yet to hear anybody complain about the game or any aspects of the game. Actually, no, I tell I've a lie. I've heard some complaints. Yeah, I've heard a complaint as well. Um, Too many horses. Really? No, no. That'd be a cool complaint, though. <laughs> That'd be a weird complaint. I think they're just being nitpicky. If they not if enough they bull testicles. Um, Fallout as well. Seventy six. Better. Um, Beta. Doing well for itself. Did you hear that they extended the... I forget what one, what beta it was, but they extended it by like like six hours. Oh, right. Because yeah. oh, they're doing like periods of play, so they close it up and open it up at different times. I should have done my research. You should have done research, research Chris. Yeah. Apparently it's doing quite well. They, hmm. um, from what I've heard, the people who have played it, um, not that bad in terms of bugs. Mm-hmm, and, mm-hmm. But do you know that whenever they... Um, so whenever the beta finishes, they go away. They don't just they don't send out a patch. You you have to reinstall the, the entire game? yeah the entire game it's fifty so gigs stupid, like. every time. They're pretty much just releasing a new product time on time on time just to fix the all the, all the bugs. Of, yeah, instead of releasing oh. just whatever you know file size patch they need, they're just releasing the whole thing again. I suppose it's because it's a beta. They're just they're just dropping it out as fast as they can produce it. That's pretty cool though. Yeah, I guess yeah. so. Todd um, Howard sleeping easy. <laughs> No. Todd fucking Howard. Yeah. I, I don't think know. it's gonna be. I think it's gonna be big. I think it will be too. And I think yeah. I might get it. Do you? I think I might. I spoke to uh, to Ryan True Gamer during the weekday, and um, who we always have up in podcast. And every time he comes up, we always just end up talking about Fallout. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And he's not picking it up. No, nope. not sold by the hype. Yeah, no, nope. not he won't. Will not be sucked into this one. I'm definitely not gonna pre-order. I'm gonna. I'm, this game has to prove itself to me before I pick it up. Oh really? The idea of it is intriguing. Who are you gonna play it with? don't know me will you play it uh no <laughs> probably not you i have a uh, red dead in my backlog <laughs> i also have final fantasy 15 <laughs> i also have um bloodborne mm-hmm. the soul series you're never gonna do that no time, sorry. i have skyrim on switch <laughs> there's so much going well, on i dude. really want to play skyrim i will play skyrim before the next please Elder game please play. don't play it on switch for your first time okay well play i have it. it for the xbox so i'm gonna probably go play it there please play it on playstation for your first time i uh, know I don't have it there. I'm not going to buy it again. Well, the um, the PlayStation version, the PS4 version is probably one of the best I've played, bar like PC. Mm, yeah. It's probably going to be the same though. Well, you can't mod. Oh, no, you can't mod. Yeah, you can't mod. It's, uh, it's, it, Chris, it's going to be played on Xbox. You have to get used to this. Fact. No, I played it at 360. It's pretty awesome. Right enough. Why? Like, why? Oh my God, this is a fucking last generation game. Like, <laughs> no. I should just forget about I it. I played like, it at 360. I give it stacks there. <laughs> Uh, nearly 100% of it and then started all over again yeah started all over again on PS4 uh, PS4 and then started it all over again on Switch because why hell you can take it with you 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 can't take the Playstation well you could but I I might get a Switch soon will you? I've been talking about this a lot Black Friday's coming up talking a lot of shit about it Black Friday's coming up what are you going to go for? I'm either going to get a Switch or an Xbox One X please don't get an Xbox One X it's Xbox One X you have enough Xboxes D no, but I'll sell all the ones and just get this one. You won't, though. It'll I just will. be like, oh, I've been meaning to sell that, and it's just sitting there, you know. This is my pile of Xboxes. I, t- I tell you what it is, Chris, because I recently started playing Black Ops 4 on the PC. Yeah. And it was just so clean and crisp, and I was like, I don't want to go back to not having, like, mm-hmm. that, like, quality. Yeah. So Are you like, enjoying Black Ops 4? I'm enjoying it a bit, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's strictly multiplayer. Um, might as well just talk about this now. I was going to talk about this later, but I might as well talk about it now. Um, yeah, because we don't talk about anything we play anymore. No. Uh, it, it, it's... 
it's multiplayer for me. I played one game of Blackout, which is the Battle Royale PUBG mode, if you want to call it that. And it's fine. It's perfectly serviceable. But Did you I enjoy it? just don't enjoy that at all. Uh. I was playing by myself. I think you need to have a squad of people. Oh, all right. Okay, okay. But uh, no, I just don't, I don't care for that. Zombies is there. Have you ca- have you cared about zombies like not the from last World of War? <laughs> the first time zombies appeared. That's what thing he was saying as well. Yeah, like I love Black Ops One zombies. That's the one mm, I played. I don't know. I, I could enjoy it. it maybe with a, like a strong team yeah. of friends. Zombies by itself, it just doesn't doesn't do anything for me. Yeah, zombies has stopped mattering since I would say Black Ops Two. Yeah. I played it in Black Ops that's when they, I didn't that's, enjoy it. That's when they did this whole transit thing. I hated so pointless. transit. I hated everything about zombies there. I hated it. I've stopped caring since then. But apparently that's their big selling point still. Transit? Oh, no, no, oh, the zombies. The zombies, oh yeah, so yeah, yeah. that's When you load up Black Ops Fortress, you can do multiplayer, you can do Blackout, or you can do zombies. So Blackout yeah. and zombies do nothing for me, so it's just multiplayer. Yeah. I have to be honest, paying £50 just to play a multiplayer does not feel good. Not yeah. one bit. Yeah. But I kind of just bit the bullet because I wanted to experience it. You were a sucker. Yeah. Sucker to Call of Duty again. It actually is like it's actually deplorable when you think about it. Like, yeah, there was no, there's no semblance of a campaign in there whatsoever. It's all multiplayer. It's all fucking blackout, which is still it's fucking only been like really it's new. Like it's not yeah. test true. You tried and tested. Nope, COD. So I don't know. I really feel like they're just fucking taking everyone for a ride on this one, and um, I regret having purchased. With this, it. with this Black Ops, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I do want to play more of it. I just. Wish I didn't have to pay fifty. They're sucking you in, dude. Yeah, yeah. They're yeah. sucking you in. Um, what else have I got? I definitely see of some stuff here. Uh, mm. um, I'm a good monster, Chris. D, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna like blow your mind here for a second. Um, how old were you, D, when you found out that the houses in Bikini Bottom in SpongeBob were um, old car mufflers that fell into the ocean? Twenty four years of age. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I did not know this, and then I seen it. Yeah. I've seen that recently as well. Did you, yeah? Yeah. Do we follow the same page? Probably possibly, not. Possibly, possibly. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I had another one of those. I can't find it. I have a load of screenshots because my whole conspiracy is screenshotted Ooh, here. Fair enough. Um, but I'm ready to go. Will You're we do Shawnee Mac's thing first? Yeah, I'm sure. Before let's, we get sucked get into the conspiracy. Shawnee Mac. Did we get two actors? Are we going to have to do his two? Uh, Rami Malek and uh, Edgar Tar- Tartan? No. No, not doing those. No, no. Like, come on, Sean. Like, okay. Uh, we want, we want people. Like, the people who are playing, who are listening to this, don't know those people. More than likely, mm-hmm. they might know Rami Malek. He's I know. Like, Rami he's Malek. the guy who plays Freddie Mercury in the new Queen film. Yeah, he was also in um, the Pacific. He which was, was awesome. He was. He was, he was uh, really uh, weird. What, what was his name in it? Think about L, isn't it? No, I don't know. I can't uh, remember. <laughs> I, can't, I forget his name. I can't well. remember, man. Right. Let's just think of two actors that we could. Um, <laughs> first two that come to your head. Right, I've got one. Uh, I've got one. Shit, mine's awful. <laughs> so it was mine. Mine go, was a Zach Braff. And mine's Catherine Zeta Jones. All right, well, um, that's worse than the one Sean. I know. Was. What 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 is Catherine Zeta Jones even fucking in? I don't know. You thought something of her. with Michael Douglas because they're always together. <laughs> so if we can get from Michael Douglas to The Rock, we win. We always get to the. Why is it exactly. always The Rock? Well, because who did you say? Zach Braff. Oh, Zach Braff. I thought you said Zach Efron. Yeah, I was going to go. <laughs> Again, Baywatch was yeah. going to come back into this <laughs> we game. We always go through the rock, no matter how we do these things. Zach Braff. What movies is Zach Braff in? No, nothing. I was just watching Scrubs recently. I'm pretty like, sure he did a movie during Scrubs or shortly after he Scrubs. He that has wasn't, done wasn't well received at all. Okay, fuck. Never mind Zach Braff. But right. we just do Shawnee Max. We're not going to get Shawnee Max. I think I can. Right, okay. We can use TV shows, though, to help yeah. us. Yeah, we we'll have let it come back. Okay. okay, let's go for... Uh, so, Rami Malek, everyone, this is... This so, is, he was in the Pacific. He was in the Pacific. Alongside um, Sledge the Ledge. Sledge the Ledge, who Edith, is... Um, who's in... Um, <laughs> I can't think of that guy's name now. What's, what, what is his name? It's the ginger kid in uh, Jurassic, Jurassic Park. Park. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, let's just say we got the Jurassic Park. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's get from Jurassic Park to... Who are we getting to? Tagger... <laughs> no... Edgar Tarrant. Tar- I'm nearly certain, right? Uh, this all hinges on on my presumption that he is the guy in the new Han Solo film, Tell right? That gives us a lot of options. That's got a uh, Woody Harrelson. That's got Amelia Clark from Game of Thrones. Oh yeah. It's got a uh, what do you call him? Uh, this is America. That that guy he's hanging out there. Uh-huh. Donald Glover. So it's got those three big three ones. Uh, I'll Google. It's also got a um, who do you call him? The short guy. We call him. He's in all the Star Wars films. Oh, that guy that we had the other week? Yeah, it's uh, also him. If is he, he dead? If anyone cares about it. No, he's not. Oh. Uh, Michael. Michael something? Mm-hmm. No. No. Completely lost? 
Um, so we said that we were also going to give ourselves like a time limit from now on with these things. Yeah, we so probably we've, should we've have. got about three minutes left, I'd say. Uh, shit. So Rami Malik. Rami Malik to Eugene Sledge. We're just calling them Sledge the Sledge. Dude, Rami Malik was in one of the Twilight films as well. Was he? Yeah, he was in one of those. So you could use one of the, one of the guys from it. <laughs> I hate Anna Kendrick is in those films. So is she? She's in one of them. Probably not the same one as him though. Is she? Yeah, definitely. She's in like the first one. For I sure. really like Anna Kendrick. Uh, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'll does, watch anything with Anna Kendrick. She does so much good. You should watch that film I seen recently. Which was uh, the one with Blake Lively as well. Oh, yes, yes, it's one of your time about that. Simple yeah. Promise. Yeah, it's a yeah, great yeah, movie. Yeah. Day. Uh, is uh, Matt Rami Malik in that perchance? No, we've got no. We just wasted like a minute of our three minute time. Um, um, right, tell you what. Well, that's a good movie. What? Go on. <laughs> um, it was on the other night. Oh no, it was on tonight. Uh, Pirates. Johnny Depp Johnny, yeah. has been axed from Pirates of the Caribbean. Well, apparently, they're going to reboot. Yeah. Did you hear? Bad, have you seen Johnny Depp recently? No. No, I seen this in Joe Rogan podcast. Doesn't, that doesn't look holy good. shit. He looks off the real estate. He looks like he weighs nothing. Skin and bones, shaving his head. Jesus. He looks awful. He looks like he is on crack twenty four seven. Not he good. Could be. He, he probably is. Like, yeah, no, he looks the man, terrible. The man is a the man is a whack job. Like, oh yeah, hundred percent. Like, yep. But well, like, um, how the hell are they gonna do? They're pirates? not. They're, they're, pirates they, are dead. If they're putting Jack Sparrow back in pirates, there's just no point. No, nope. no one's oh gonna enjoy God. that without uh, Johnny Depp. Sorry, and even towards the end, they weren't enjoying it with Johnny Depp. So, no, nope. three hundred million, three hundred uh, million was the budget for the most recent Pirates movie, and it made eight hundred million. And they've seen that as a as a failure, only making yeah. five hundred million profit. Well, that is in films like it's ridiculous. That's crazy. The money they spend on these by. Um. So okay. we did. We didn't get it. Let's put it. Let's, let's, let's nip that in the bud and let's move on. I think. I. I. That's because I. Okay. Yeah. His name is Taron Egerton, not Edgar Taron. <laughs> <laughs> that was my first mistake. <laughs> What's he in? Um. He is in. So he is a. He better in that Han Solo film. All right. Well, literally. Um. Correct. He is in Watership Down. That's a TV show. Wait. Hang on. Hang on. Movies. He is in. Kingsman: The Secret Service. Oh shit, it's him, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's also in uh, Sing, Eddie the Eagle, Rocket Man. Oh man. First Kingsman. He's in Legend with Tom Hardy. I've seen quite a few of these. Uh, Robin Hood. Shit. Okay. Kingsman. Fuck. Kingsman is a serious so cast. He, he's not the guy I was thinking of. I can't even fucking think who is I was Is Michael Keane in Kingsman? No. Who do you call him as? Not even once. Because if he was, Michael Keane's also in Batman. So it's Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman's in a lot of shit. Morgan Freeman is in, um, he was in one of the films you were talking about earlier. But I can't think of it now. But he was in it. Jurassic Park? <laughs> no, 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 no. No. It's gone. It's long gone. It's, Sean, it's you long, win. Long, long gone. We should That's have got the actor up before we started. Oh, but anyway. Shit, so bad at this. Uh, Sean does not win because uh, Sean uh, cheated by giving us shit names. He's also in Scotland this week. Probably at a fucking another Harry Potter quiz up Probably in the fucking up, mountains up, of up Scotland. On, uh, uh, up on Ben Nevis. Is that Scotland? That's a mountain in Scotland, yeah. I'm pretty sure it's Scotland. I thought it was England. Nah. England's flat-ish. <laughs> England has mountains. Nah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it has yet. mountains. Um, okay, Eddie, before we do this, this is the Empty Promise Podcast. Oh. And you can find this podcast and all the previous podcasts over at, <laughs> at XA Gaming at youtube.com uh, slash XA Gaming. That is the umbrella of operations that we operate under. Um <laughs> You can also take the audio version off of Spotify and listen to it wherever you go, which so many of you have been doing, and we thank you so much for finding us there. Uh, you'll also find us on any podcast hosting service. Um, iTunes is good, too, if anybody uses I, iTunes. iTunes is good. I don't if know if many people use iTunes. I think iTunes is very American. If you have an iPhone, you probably use iTunes. I don't know. But if you have an iPhone, you probably also use Spotify, so yeah, Spotify think, is where it's at. I think people would use, yeah. Get up use on that. Um, but thank you to everybody getting in touch with us this week. Um, as we begin, D, a new series, a new chapter in the podcast. This is the conspiracy mm -hmm. series. Mm -hmm. If we had that lead, I could play some conspiracy type music. Yeah, but you don't. No, we I can't. don't. Uh, might do a post. Probably <laughs> won't. <laughs> the X Files music. <laughs> Preference. Okay. Um, so basically, this is the conspiracy series, the series in which we talk all about uh, worldwide conspiracy <laughs> theories. <laughs> There was a bit of a hint in the name there, but... Um, basically, we, we have taken a conspiracy each, 
Mm-hmm. And we are to fill each other's head with shit over yeah. the next 30 to 40 minutes. Or fact. Um, or fact, fact or fiction. What is that show called? I it's couldn't think Beyond of it. Belief, Fact Beyond or Fiction. Belief, yeah. What a great show that Excellent was. Excellent show. We should just do Brilliant. that. Oh, that'd be great. We should do that next time. Should we'll, we? just, we'll just go like at length, we'll talk about a subject and then we'll just like review it at the end whether it was true or not. Oh, that'd be so cool, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We should we should also do that like, kind of scary intro that guy used to do where he like, stood at like, a table full of stuff and was like, <laughs> you know, uh, did Mrs... Uh, this is the bottle Mrs. used to hit yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah, 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 so-and-so yeah. in the crotch repeatedly. Um, who wants to start? Do you want to go first? Sure. Um, I I'm, go in, first. I'm very interested in your conspiracy. I, I'm also very interested in my conspiracy. I decided to go with like the bi- one of the big dogs. So before we begin, we are going to be running this series over a, f- a few weeks and months. Um, and it won't just be all at once. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so Feel free to share your big conspiracies. And you if you don't hear any here, don't worry, rest assured, we will get to them. We just wanted to break them up rather than try to jump in with like a million conspiracies here and, and not have any grounds to back up what the fuck we're talking about. Well, would you like me, Chris, to go in with like my big one? Or do you want me to talk? I got a couple of... I got a couple... <laughs> <laughs> I'd love you to go with your big one, Dean. <laughs> oh, for sure, all night long. <laughs> or should I should I start with uh, a couple of um, more lighthearted ones? Not necessarily lighthearted, but like why don't why don't you um, not, why, as, not as heady? Why don't you touch on some of the lighthearted ones first, just to get get the get yeah. the juices flowing? Yeah, we get the ball rolling right. before yeah. you slip in with your big ones. <laughs> <laughs> you get things all lubed up. Um, okay, starting with okay, yeah. starting with Chris and Chris. I'm going to start with this one now. Um, yeah, now Chris, I want you to. I forgot to save it because I'm a fucking numpty. I'm going to start with the Avril, Avril, Avril Lavigne conspiracy. What? The Avril Lavigne. Avril Lavigne. That's right. I'm saying that right, aren't I? Yeah. Yeah. The singer? The singer. The singer-songwriter. I Canadian did, I did singer-songwriter. I did not even hear of this conspiracy before. So Canadian singer-songwriter Avril Lavigne has been subject to repeated hoaxes about her death. What? A Twitter user who claims to be a 17-year-old high school student with more than 13,000 followers detailed the claim that she she had died. Okay. So, uh, Lavi- on, so on, what they're trying on, to say is Avril Lavigne is dead? They, they claim that she had died, right? Okay. A, a bunch of people, nearly a quarter of a million. This was retweeted nearly a quarter of a million times. <laughs> In the thread, they allege that the singer took her own life in late 2003 after her grandfather's death. Okay. But it says because her supposed death, in mm-hmm. quotes, occurred at the peak of her career, yeah. her record company hired a lookalike known as Melissa Vandella. What? To impersonate her. Vandella was reportedly recruited beforehand to pose as the Canadian singer for paparazzi. The theory continues. This death hoax was has surfaced several times in the last few years. Miss Levine was also the victim of another rumor which said she'd been killed in a snowboarding accident. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Those who support the theory on Twitter back their claim with inconsistencies over the years in the appearance of her skin, her jawline, eye corners, and fashion what? style. What? As well as handwriting. Who has ever seen Avril Levine's handwriting? Well, this is it. They've got pictures, Chris. They got, they've got proof. Air quotes. I'd love to know where these people get their handwriting. I'd love something handwritten from Avril Lavigne. Others cite a promo picture of a singer with the word Melissa written on her hand. That has to be the worst conspiracy setup ever if you read your real fucking name yeah, on I know, your yeah. hand. Holy shit. So I was like, look in the mirror, Avril. <laughs> but I'm Melissa. <laughs> okay. Um, so basically, one person came up with this theory that Avril Lavigne was dead, spread it a bunch and then people have been like kind of dialing in on it and what they've it's noticed like, like changes in their face and well yeah this is like apparently you know soon as soon as someone like, like people change some people gain weight some well, people yeah, lose exactly, weight right? you, you change as you age like people people, people can, can like change. people can do weird shit with makeup nowadays as well exactly yeah you know? and obviously your fashion style is going to change over time yeah exactly right? Mm. I don't know if I. I don't co- know if that's supported very well. If, I don't know if I buy that one at all. Holds up. That I, is a, one of those like kind of weird conspiracies that people buy into. I he- I heard that once about Eminem as well that he was dead like mm. years and someone was like pretending to be him. A, is it James Paul McCartney? What's his name? Oh yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. Good, you got his full name, yeah, James J- Paul McCartney. <laughs> Paul McCartney, the lead <laughs> singer of the Beatles. Apparently, uh, he um, also perished, died, and has been replaced by a look like. I no like why? Maybe that's why James Paul the. Maybe one's called James and the original was called Paul, but he died. And now they were like, oh no, it's actually James Paul McCartney. But why would they just not, like, I don't know. Would these record labels not make more money off, just, a, off yeah. of a person's death? And like you saying, like a commemorative like mm-hmm. like release of their yeah. best work? Yeah. I don't buy into that. I don't buy it either. 
That was, not a, not that was a flimsy all. can of, that was yeah that was a flimsy conspiracy all right chris i got a, i got the other one i remembered where i saved the put one. that in the flimsy pile go. i'm gonna pick this up for you chris just give me chris you got come on chris like you're killing me here you gotta give me a couple i seconds. will put your conspiracies in in uh, two piles flimsy or uh firm does it hold water yeah that's what you gotta ask yourself does it hold water i forgot to see this chris i wonder how people come up with this shit though like who decides one day, you know what, Avril Lavigne's probably dead. I think she died around the time of her grandfather's death. Okay, the other one, I can't get I can't get the link up for it, but essentially it was the Mattress Mafia. I'm interested. All right. So apparently... Um, I'm very one, interested. One particular Reddit user brought up, with quite a considerable amount of evidence, how often do you change, are you supposed to change your mattress? Seven years. Every Once every seven years, yeah. right? So seven really, year rich. all of us should be going out there and changing our mattress once every seven years. So then why are there so many mattress stores? You can, surely you can't be selling all those mattresses. Mm. And then they were like... I never thought if you, if you notice, you'll see like on like high I streets, guess. there'll be like a lot of like compete... Like there's competing mattress firms out this there. This is going straight into the firm head. Yeah, I believe this with my whole heart. <laughs> right? So there's why like... Why are there so many mattresses? There's mattress? competing mattress firms, right? For a product that's only supposed to sell to one person every seven years, right? Right. Okay, okay but let's think about this. Not everybody is buying their mattress on the same year. Hmm. Of course not, no. But if everyone only buys it once every seven years, it's not like... Yeah, how many people in the world, yeah, exactly, yeah, need to like, be changing their mattress every day? But anyway. people buy mattresses every day. I'd love to know the, the, the world figures of mattress sales on a daily basis day. Well, Chris, this person wanted to know it too. They, they were more focused on... Do you have um, the figure? I don't. I, oh. I don't have the link. God damn. But they, they were more focused on like towns and cities and how like all the mattress stores happen to be like in close proximity of each other. And they were saying there's something like 12 mattress stores in one town. You're like, how? Why, how? Why would they even compete with each other? You know? Exactly, Chris. Or how could they compete with each other? My God. For such a small customer. So what, is the, what, what are they getting on here? What, what is the, what is the well, bottom Chris, line? They're saying mattresses uh-huh. are like small, not small, but they're like... Uh, large you pay a large amount of money for like one mattress Mm -hmm. so it makes them very good ways to launder cash enter the mattress mafia so the mafia are funneling all of their like ill-gotten gains funneling it through Through the mattress shops no way making seals of mattresses think Uh, about it chris no way do you ever hear about the the old mafia expression gone to the mattresses no come on i haven't just sleeping with the mattresses you ever seen you ever seen godfather nope go to the mattress don't care for it it means um, is that actually an expression? That's, that's an expression. It means you go to a. It's whenever you're about to start a, a gang war. No you, way. You send all of your men out to like safe houses. Okay. And they I, sleep on mattresses. I wholeheartedly believe this theory. Because you know, because like you said, nobody needs a mattress every single day. That's it. You know, how are they selling so many mattresses? How are they? How are they all staying in business? They're getting <laughs> money from somewhere else. Let me see. Who's a big seller of mattresses here at the minute? Like in this, in this dreams, like, dreams. The bedding specialists. Yeah. Wow. There you go. Silent Night. Well, they're more bedding, I think. Mind blown, Chris. Maybe the bedding mafia as well. How often do people need to change their bedding? I wish I, I wish I'd have found the link, but apparently they give a lot of evidence, Chris. That's great. There's a lot of questions raised. I don't think people need mattresses nearly as much as they think they do. <laughs> I think people spend a lot more money on mattresses than they need to. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? But this is the thing as well, Dee. Have you ever seen those advertisements of these mattresses that are like lifetime guarantees? They're like tested, like using like machines and it's like Simba mattress, I think is one of them. Oh. And then there's another one called like Mammoth mattress. And they're like these big mattresses and they're endorsed by like all these famous people, obviously just get a name behind the brand. But like they're put through rigorous testing that apparently they're like lifetime mattresses. Like you don't need to change these things. Now you pay upwards of like nah. two and a half grand for these mattresses. But what I'm trying to say is why would they be competing in like a mafia turf mm. war? If people don't need mattresses as there, often, there, there are some legitimate mattress salesmen out there, guys. I'm not trying to I'm not trying to shit all mm. over the mattress people out there, Good. but listen, there's some questions. There's some questions there that gotta is. be asked. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? How often do you change your mattress? I've never once bought a mattress. <laughs> my mother's bought me a mattress. I uh, I have been supplied with mattresses throughout my. I've bought one life. mattress for myself. Yeah, I spent two hundred and fifty dollar. Whoa! It was right when we came back to the new studio. Oh, nice. Podcast. This one. No, 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 the, the, the old, old new studio. studio. Gotcha. And uh, I spent it, and I still have a mattress now, but it definitely needs changed. That's only like a year, two Yeah, years? but man, like £250 is not the money you want to spend on a mattress. You want to pay £350? Yeah. 
minimum. Like, what is an ideal an ideal cash sum to pay for a mattress? Do you know, I've never once asked the question, how much would I pay for a mattress? Yeah, like, how much is too much, you know? I don't know. I don't like, know. Is, is a thousand pound too much? That's way too much. <laughs> okay. I, w- I wouldn't go over... 500. 400. Really? Would you be hard pushed to go 500 for a mattress? I would be very hard pushed. If you lay on this thing and you were like, oh my God. It would have one of them like memory foam mattresses or something. Oh yeah. yeah. One of them real high quality mattresses. This is what I don't get as well. Um, Some hotels have fabulous mattresses. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, where do they get them? Because think of how many people have to sleep in those things as well. That's where the mattress stores are making their money from. Yeah, it has to be hotels. But surely hotels would, would like buy wholesale. From where? I don't know. Mattress mafia. I, I'm so confused right now. There you go. There you go. Firm believers. <laughs> Put that in the firm pile. The truth is out there. It is. It's it's solid. It's, 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 it's in the firm pile the second you start speaking. That's, you know, that's how you know it's a good conspiracy. That's how you know it's accurate. I've actually got to keep track of, of the uh, the firm and, and flopsy <laughs> pile. The flopsy. You go, on a, you go ahead and get your, your real one up. Okay, if, yeah. Um, so, the, Chris, the one that I have went with as my real one. Is the big dog? It, it's the conspiracy theory, just to it, of the mother of all conspiracy yeah, theories. Yeah, I know what this is. It's the one that started them all. Yeah, who shot Jr.? Oh my god! <sighs> Dallas. So seriously, who shot JFK? Yeah, brilliant, the, brilliant conspiracy to the, start with. The assassination of John Fitzgerald Kennedy. Is that right? Is it? I feel like I just guessed that. Um, I feel like I should probably know that actually as well. Sorry, I'm just writing this down. Mattress I'll go to research what I mafia. Did. That is that is in the firm pile right there, right? Hit me up. What are we going with? JFK assassination. Yeah, that's a big one. That is, a it is the one, Chris. Here's a quick brief. Background. Yeah, let's get it. Yeah, I was gonna say let's give us give us a give us a recap. The assassination of John F. Kennedy on November twenty second, nineteen sixty three, has spurred numerous conspiracy theories, which include accusations of involvement by the CIA, the mafia, sitting Vice President Lyndon B. Johnson. Mm-hmm. Cuban Prime Minister Fidel Castro, the KGB, and even some combination thereof. Some conspiracy theories further claim that the United States federal government covered up crucial information in the aftermath of the assassination. Former Los Angeles District Attorney Vincent Bugliosi estimated that a total of 42 groups, 82 assassins, and 214 people have been accused at one time or another in various conspiracy scenarios. Fuck. So, so there's a thing, lot of people on the line for this one. This basically. is yeah. This this um, is the the conspiracy that like started people consp- conspiracy. Yeah. Um, and the person that we are led to believe shot JFK. Uh, Lee Harvey Oswald. Lee Harvey Oswald. So. Um. So yeah. So the the outcome of this assassination was a done by a group called the Warren Commission, which was an, so um, Vice President Lyndon B. Johnson obviously became president after JFK was shot. And he sort of set up this group, the Warren Commission, to find out what happened and why was Kennedy assassinated and all this here. So they concluded that Lee Harvey Oswald was the only person responsible for assassinating Kennedy. Um, in 1979, the United States House Select Committee on Assassinations. Apparently there's a committee That's for a that. Thing? Yeah. Well, Chris, okay. you've got to have a committee. There, happen, there seems to be a lot of assassinations that happen in America. Yeah. Like it's, a a big, poli- it's a big place, fi- though. Figures. It's a big place. Um, they concluded that Kennedy was probably assassinated as a result of a conspiracy, although it did not identify which individuals or groups other than Oswald. Mm. They reasoned that a second gunman probably also fired at Kennedy, but acoustic evidence that the HSCA accepted in reaching its conclusions was later discredited by another set of experts. Other federal and municipal investigations have concluded, have condu- which have been conducted, most of which support the conclusions reached by the Warren Commission report. Nonetheless, a majority of Americans polled indicated a belief in some sort of conspiracy. Right. So, let's dial it back a bit, first of all. John F. Kennedy. What a guy. He's in, was this Texas he was shot? No. It was, um, yeah. Texas? Dallas, Texas. Dallas, Texas, yeah. Um, oh he is out, um, he's sitting in his car, top down, wife beside him. Mm-hmm. What's her name? Nancy? Is it Nancy? No, Nancy. No. That's Reagan. Yeah, um, Reagan. What's her name? I f- Louise Kennedy? No, 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 no. I don't know. We're, I don't fo- know. we're I don't focusing know. on the wrong thing here. Aren't Nina? We? I don't know. Doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> we are focusing entirely on the wrong thing. <laughs> anyway, he's sitting top down. He's waving at the people. They are driving along like a street. Is it a pro- I don't know a promenade? It, yeah, it's it's a yeah, it's a motorcade. He's he's part of a motorcade, motorcade. driving down. Um, 
a street in Dallas, Texas. So he's waving right. at the fans. Is this during like a political? Is this during like um what do you call that? Like polling season? Is it during? I'm not actually sure. Or no. was this just a routine visit kind of thing? He's waving. Anyway, does not matter. <laughs> Basically, he shot three times, like what in the head and chest. Well, this is the thing. Yeah. So there's there's a. Uh, there was three shots fired, mm-hmm. according to the um, <clears throat> Warren Commission. Yeah. Other acoustic evidence has suggested there were four shots fired. Um, and there's like a lot of debate about the number of shots that were fired. That's actually a big... Con- a big contender in the... Contender yeah, yeah, yeah. in what, what actually w- what went down. Of course. Um, so sort of... The Warren Commission concluded that three shots were fired. Yeah. From the Texas School Book Depository at a time period ranging from approximately 4.8 to in excess of seven seconds. So, according to the Warren Commission, Mm -hmm. Lee Harvey Oswald, from the Texas book depository, shot three shots Three shots less fired. than seven seconds. Now this, and the, the, the weapon he is using is like, I'm pretty sure it's a bolt action rifle. Is that right? I got this. I have this. You have the actual name of the weapon. I have the name of the weapon. Okay, because this makes a, this makes a big difference in this as well. I don't have the name of the weapon. Okay, it is a... Oh, I have the weapon. Yeah. The Warren Commission examined the capabilities of the Carcano rifle and ammunition, as well as Oswald's military training and yeah. post-military experience, and determined that he had the ability to yeah. fire three shots within a time span of 4.8 to 5.6 seconds. That's what they concluded he Conclude. could do, right? So that's pretty damn impressive, though, to be fair. You can fire three case. shots in less than six seconds accurately is a big contestion. Yeah. That's one of the one of the big things that a lot of conspiracy theorists focus in on is that um it has to it's accurate. You could you could probably fire it. I don't know why our phones are going going fucking moolah. Like um, that that is not possible for one human being to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, he, th- now as it said, he did have military experience. He had military experience, right? Was he was he like dishonorably discharged from the military or no, no, no nothing he, like he that? Was he was just served his time. He served his time. Um was he a sniper? He was a sharpshooter. Sharp so according to the official Marine Corps records, he was tested in shooting in December 1956, scoring a 212, which is slightly above the minimum uh, qualification to be considered a sharpshooter, which is the intermediate category out of like all of them. But in May 1959, so more recent, four years before the shooting, he scored 191, earning the lower designation of marksman instead of sharpshooter. So he wasn't even he wasn't even deemed fit as a sharpshooter during his second he, testing. He and was a, he was a marksman, which is still is still like mar- marine level, but mm-hmm. not but not like sniper yeah. elite sniper level. Not a, yeah, not an expert. Okay. Um, because I'm thinking about this right. You like, we've played the games and we've seen like the bolt action rifles and stuff. Now, I haven't seen one recut. fired, you know, firsthand. But those things to be manually loaded first of all takes a little bit of time. Now, obviously, being trained, you can do that quite quick. Yeah. Um, my understanding of it is you fire the shot, the case, the spent case will fly out of the side. No, you have to do that. You have to, you have to, oh, that's right. Yeah. That's you got it. You got to pull it back. Is. Spend the case. Yeah. New one in. No, no. So it'll be like a, so it's a, you have a magazine, you load it in, yeah. you fire the shot, then you, you use the bolt action yeah. to release the case yeah. and then put the next bullet load it in yeah but you have to put the bullet in yeah. manually yeah you don't put the bullet in but you have to do the little like release okay. the bolt oh yes, the mechanism yes, yes. To i do understand that. it now yeah okay so we had to do that three times yeah the while bolt. still firing accurately mm-hmm. and hitting a moving target exactly how far away do you have it does the war I, I might have it i might have it i might have it i'm assuming it's what about 400 yards maybe um i don't know yardage what like a football field away <laughs> possibly i mean it doesn't matter where. But, I mean, we've all seen the footage. It's pretty, it's pretty far. Like, yeah. Um, and the fact that he hit him for the head, right? Yeah. And you said three shots. That's what the Warren Commission said. It was yeah. three shots. But audio evidence and eyewitness evidence suggested that it was four shots. So people heard four shots. They heard four shots. Where'd the other shot go? Well, this is it. So either, if we're to believe that Oswald acted alone, as yeah. the, the Warren Commission suggests, that means he got four shots out. <laughs> with bolt action doing the thing and managed to hit four shots. They only found three bullets. So they never found the fourth bullet, so it might, may well have completely missed. Or it may not have happened. That's what they're not sure about. But there is eyewitness evidence and audio evidence that suggests there was a fourth shot. Right. And um, so essentially it's like, was he capable of doing that? By himself? By himself. Okay. Why would he have, though? 
Well, you know what I mean? Did he have any like distaste towards the president, towards presidential, you know, figures? Like, what was his motive behind just wanting to assassinate? Was he like, was he put up to it? Who put him up to it? That's what I want to know. Um, he was, he had um, been accused of being like a left wing. Yeah, he okay. was like sympathetic to Soviet Russia and Cuba in particular. So there's allegations of that was why he did it. Um, and at that time, was Kennedy harsh on these? Harsh. It was just the Cold War. It was just the Cold War between the United States and Soviet okay. Russia. Okay. Um, apparently, Kennedy wasn't super harsh against Cuba. Um, and that's one of the reasons like people have like cast doubt on that. They're like, really, he wouldn't have that much of venom against Kennedy, per se. Okay. And that's one of the reasons they kind of cast doubt on that. Um, the other thing, right, is that he was... And this is this happened for sure. He was in the Russian embassy in Cuba, or maybe Mexico City, but he was in a Russian embassy at one okay. point, which is like massive. Like, yeah, you can't like this is Soviet Russia versus the United States. They were completely polar opposites. Yeah, yeah. He was an American citizen in a Russian embassy, and there was known about this, but he was allowed back into the U.S. So right. they knew he was in... They knew he had been in a Russian embassy. But they still allowed him back into the US. Why would they have done this? Well, Chris, there is a claim, right? And this yeah. is like one of the more convincing like arguments. So any other person wouldn't have been allowed back in, would have been arrested well, trying to get back in. It's hard, it's hard to say. like, But there were reports that he had been working with the CIA. Uh, the Central Intelligence Agency, right? Okay. And apparently he had been like a, an informer. So the reason he'd been in the Russian uh, embassy was to gain information. That's why he was allowed back in the US, you know, with no issue. Um, so one of the allegations is that this was not done by Oswald alone. This was a, a CIA initiative to take out the president because he had been um, negative, or not negative, but... Yeah, what is, what is, the, like, what is the, uh, the reason that the CIA would have wanted Kennedy dead? Did you ever hear about the Bay of Pigs? Yes. So was there was an attempt, yeah. There was yeah, an attempt yeah. by the CIA, multiple attempts by the CIA to kill, kill Castro, take out F Fidel Castro. Yeah. This wasn't necessarily sanctioned by the president, um, and it wasn't right. like in favorable. It wasn't favorable by the president because obviously Cuba was really close to the Soviet Russia, and they both had like America and Soviet Russia had a bunch of nukes. So like taking out Fidel Castro may have started a nuclear war, which nobody wanted. Yeah, the CIA did want. Why? Well, because they were the Central Intelligence Agency and they wanted to be in a position of power or whatever. Um, so one of the reasons, apparently, that the CIA might have been involved in this is that Kennedy didn't want them in the picture, didn't want them to have the power that they had because they kind of operate outside of like the federal government. They sort of do what they want. They have their own jurisdiction. Or not, they have yeah. their own... Yeah. Their own powers. Yeah. Kennedy wanted to kind of bring those back. Okay. Keep them... Keep them in line with what was going on with the government, that kind of thing. So apparently, and this is, there was a bunch, there's a bunch of debunkers. So interesting. There's a bunch of debunkers, Chris, okay. on this conspiracy. And then they've debunked basically everything. They have evidence to debunk all of this here. Or so they claim. So they, they, they debunked the idea that the mafia was involved. They were, the mafia wouldn't have any interest in this. It's far too much heat for the mafia to do. They debunked the idea that Lyndon B. Johnson, the vice president at the time, apparently he had interest in taking out Kennedy. The obvious one being he'd become president. president yeah. um, and they didn't see eye to eye in a lot of factors. He debunks that because that's a fucking crazy thing for, for our vice president to do and get away with. Yeah. Um, he debunks the idea that it was the Soviets. He says that's just... I, that, that was my... <coughs> my understanding of the whole Kennedy assassination was that it would... Well, on the conspiracy, was that it was the Russians. Well, this is it. But if the Russians... Okay, so put it this way. If the Americans, the guy the Warren Commission thought the Russians did this, yeah, they definitely would have found the evidence. I mean, why, yeah. why, would they, why would they not? If they thought the Russians were involved, why would they not pursue that at every angle? Because that would have made them the good guys. The Russians killed our president. That is reason for us to go to war justifiably. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, if, why would the American Commission not pick up any evidence that was there? Why would they hide that fact? Maybe they didn't want to go to war. <laughs> Probably Isn't not. Isn't Cuba like an ally? But why would you not? Why would you not? You know, like, look at this whole Novichok thing happening in the UK right now. Russia, Russia yeah, yeah, yeah. is involved in this. Yeah. Why would you hide that if it was a U.S. president being killed? Yeah. It's like why would they? Why would they ignore this inf evidence? That was kind of the main reason he said Soviet Russia was involved, and it was far too risky for them to get their hands dirty on this, because if they were caught, that is like, 
That's the end of times for them, basically. Yeah, it's wow. like, and that's probably the end times for all of us. Like assassinating the president. President is a big thing, like. Yeah, that's like someone assassinating. That's like an American marksman assassinating Putin now, isn't it? That's exactly what it's like. Wow. And it would just be mad, like. Um, but it might have, you know, <laughs> this is all conspiracy. We don't know. But my point is, he was able to debunk all of those things. He says there's evidence to suggest that that's not the case. There's evidence to suggest that that doesn't make sense. The CIA one, he says he can't disprove. He says there's too many classified documents. There's too much. There's too much like they don't release their documents, do they? They're not. Do they? they don't have to. Apparently, Trump released documents recently. Oh, and they, they up, didn't, on this on Kennedy, yeah. But apparently, didn't reveal enough or much at all. Right. So apparently, that's the one he can't disprove. He who doesn't. Is, who is the power to release documents? The president, or is it like the Secretary of Defense, I'm or not who sure. has that? It probably would be the president. I always thought it was the CIA would have to do that. I mean, it's their doc- I mean, if they if they destroyed the documents, there's no documents to release. You know what I mean? Wow. But um, so that's the one that that is the one that kind of stumps the debunkers. So a lot of people, a lot of conspiracists are willing to believe a lot of those things that we listed. The debunkers are kind of going. There's reasons for suggest that that's not that's not the case. The CIA one is the one that because they're so secretive, it's hard to know their motives, hard to know what they were at. But get this, Oswald himself claimed to be innocent, denying all charges and even declaring himself a patsy, just a patsy is what he declared to reporters. What does that mean, a patsy? You know, like a patsy, like a fall guy, the guy they picked oh, right, to be okay, responsible. Okay. So this is kind of lends into the whole idea. We've all heard about this. The shooter on the grassy knoll. Yeah. This is like the iconic conspiracy yeah. when it comes to JFK. It's like Oswald was up on a building, six floors up, with a rifle shooting yeah. towards the back of Kennedy's head, right? Yeah. And that's where we see the bullet go through. Right. But then there was this tape that came out, and everybody has seen this tape. Yeah. If you haven't seen this tape, it's on YouTube. Everyone will go, it's, it's gory. You can see a lot. Yeah. You can see a man be killed, right? Yeah. 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 But when you slow it down, and you slow it down a lot. Yeah. You can see him go forward, yeah, and then you see him go back. Go back. And a lot of people say, "Okay, that's just the, the impact of going back." Other people say that's a second shot. bullet. Yeah, a that's shot from the front. The fourth shot. Wow! Holy shit! So someone shot from the front or from the from, from the, the side, side, from a grassy knoll. Holy nose. shit! And that is that is the iconic. This is the JFK conspiracy. There was a f- a second person there who did the holy shooting. Holy shit! And Oswald was a fall guy? Was Os- Oswald says he was a fall guy, but he was up there with a rifle for some reason. Was he conspiring with someone? Was it a CIA plot? Why would he have been up there in the first place with a rifle? He's up there to kill the president. Like, yeah. Has to be. But is he up there to Or is be... he up there to take out the guy who's trying to kill the president? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't think I believe that he's just a patsy. He's involved. He knows what's going on. Yeah, but, you who, don't, you who, don't... Yeah, but who has it? Employed him to be involved. Yeah. That's the question. You don't find yourself sitting in the Russian embassy and then on, on the sixth floor of a building with a gun in your hand, wow. aimed at the president. With, if you don't know what's going on, I'm gonna watch this footage again. Yeah, I'm really interested. Yeah. In it. So, but here is where this is the really interesting thing. Out of all of this, uh-huh. we can we can guess and we can surmise and we can try and work out what happened based on the evidence we have. And we have so many like we have eyewitness reports and apparently there was eyewitnesses where. Um, what do you call that? Like when they're like harassed by the Warren Commission, they were harassed. You know, they were told, "Don't give your, don't give that testimony. That's no good." Right. There was a lot of like opinions that weren't heard. Who was told this? Eyewitnesses. Who right. Were okay. Oh, right. Okay. Okay. So they were silenced. Basically, the silence was bought in a way. Yeah. Not bought, but like physically. Holy shit! Or so like, they were told, like, if you if you can uh, if you go against this. Ah, but surely well, there was too many people there. Well, this is it. There How was, many people um, did they have to fucking harass? Jim Mars, good guy, presented a list of 103 people he believed died convenient deaths under suspicious circumstances. 103 people. He noted that the deaths were grouped around investigations conducted by the Warren Commission. No way. This is the government commission. So this government commission has been hired to find out the truth behind the Kennedy assassination. Yeah. They go to these 103 people, ask them, and then they conveniently die shortly afterwards. After they give their statements. Well, that's just one guy who, who says that, that there's 103 people died. I mean, a bunch of these people probably died, just died. Natural people causes, died, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, he says they died. But 103 from, people did. That's, <laughs> that's a, a lot, lot of people, people that died just from natural causes. Like, holy shit. Uh, and one of, the, um, one of the head guys on the Warren Commission was a former CIA head director. Oh, cool. 
Holy shit. So, you know, was there collusion there? Did a lot of a lot of the conspiracy theorists say the Warren Commission was had one purpose and it wasn't to find out who killed Kennedy. It, it was, was to say that Oswald killed Oswald, Kennedy. Oswald, yeah. And that was it. To Ooh. hide any other sort of collusion. Um, but, so we can guess and, and wonder about all that there. Yeah. Well, the only person who knows for sure yeah. was Lee R.V. Oswald. Oswald. But shortly after 1.30 a.m. on Saturday, November 23rd, this was after um, the shooting on Friday, November 22nd, Oswald was arraigned for murdering President Kennedy. On Sunday, November 24th at 11.21 a.m., nightclub owner Jack Ruby fatally shot Oswald as he was being transferred from city jail to the county jail. Yeah, seen that footage time and time again. Why? <laughs> and why would he kill him? Like, why yeah, would you shoot why the man would you just not let had been justice be served for killing yeah. the president? Unless he had another motive. And Oswald couldn't be allowed to speak. Mm, I mean, look, at, it's just there's just too many suspicious, know, weird it, things it happening It is there. possible, though, that this guy was just like, he had this love for the president, maybe. This maybe. nightclub owner. Maybe just had this like infatuation with JFK. And he just thought, you know what? You know. We've all seen Batman. He was going to do it. Oh, yeah, that's it. That's yeah. it. Um, but maybe that was it. But maybe, like you say, Man. Oswald was going to talk. Then what would have happened? You Open know, a if, fucking if can Os- of worms? If Oswald was told to say nothing and he said, yeah. I'm just a patsy. Yeah. And he gets shot. And 103 people die under suspicious Holy circumstances. Holy shit, yeah. There's too much going on for yeah. it just to be an innocent, well, not an innocent, but an assassination of the president. And a guy, a guy who's considered only uh, like the lowest tier of shooter in the Marine Corps yeah. manages to get out three, possibly four shots. Headshots. Headshots. Oh, and then there's another thing as well, Chris. Here's another thing that kind of suggests that there was a mm. second shooter. Is um, Let me find it. Da, 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 da. Oh, yeah, so I'm um, sorry, I just wanted to say this. Some researchers suggest that Oswald served as an active agent of the CIA, uh, pointing to how he attempted to defect to Russia but was able to return without difficulty. Um, a former roommate of Oswald, James Botello, who would, later, who would later become a California judge, stated in an interview that he believed Oswald was involved in intelligence assignment in Russia. Shit. Which links him even further with the CIA. But the thing I wanted to show you was some critics are skeptical of the whole single bullet theory. So one bullet killed Kennedy. Yeah. The fatal blow that went through his neck, took off half of his head. Yeah. <laughs> See, this bullet also hit um, another person in the motorcade, Connolly. So a man, Connolly. So they claim Sorry. that in order for the bullet, which hit Kennedy above the right shoulder blade and passed through his neck, would have had to change course in order to pass through the rib cage of the second person, Connolly. So they're saying the angle doesn't add up. Does not add up. So there was another bullet. Apparently. Holy and the official, shit. the official thing is that there was one bullet that went through yeah. and it hit the guy in front. Is that the driver? No. I'm not sure who it was. No, I think he was just sitting in front. Along oh, the yeah, no, it wouldn't have been the driver because they kept driving, I think. Um. So, yeah. Didn't his wife like jump on top of him as well? She like, like, yeah, tries to protect him and like kind of holds him up and that, like, like hold pieces of his head. Yeah. Holy shit. At least he knew nothing about it. Well, that's it. Like, it was over very, very quick for him. But I mean, was he like a clear cut president, clean cut president? <laughs> yeah. He was a very, he was a pretty popular president. Yeah. He was a very young. Didn't he have a thing with Marilyn Monroe? Apparently. Yeah. yeah. There's a whole conspiracy there. As there. Well, she, of... she killed herself. Yeah. Killed herself. Killed herself. Yeah. And, um, and then he died. Yeah. Died. Well, apparently, you now she um, and he had a whole thing, mm-hmm. and she had she knew things that he should not have told her. Yeah, but did. Yeah, probably post coitus. Post coitus. And Holy um, so she shit. needed to be taken out. Apparently, like, you can go so deep with this, especially whenever it's the CIA, because they're such fucking mysterious, fucky bastards. <sighs> I love the CIA for this. Yeah, yeah. Else, the stuff that the stuff that they can do, like if they want something know. covered up, they'll get it covered up. Well, this is it, like you know, they have they have the resources. A lot of these conspiracy theories sound a bit crackpot because you're like, there's no way you could have pulled this off. Like as you said, there's so many witnesses. How could yeah. you have gotten away with it? The CIA could have gotten away with it. Yeah, that's one. Co- like yeah. that's you talk about yeah. people who could do this. They could do it. Similar, the Soviets could have done it. Yeah, but don't think they did. See, I, I was always under the impression that Harvey Oswald was like this guy, like this elite sniper, and that's why he made the shots. Mm-hmm. But as you said there, like he, he barely passed like his training 
He's like marksman training, whatever it was. Yeah. Well, he did. He, he passed. He, he passed. Was on, he was on the middle. Marksman. He was on the middle tier, right? Yeah. And he just just made the middle tier. But whenever he tested again four years before this assassination, he was the most basic tier. That's still the Marine Corps, though. Like that's yeah. you're still a good shooter. Yeah. You know, but is he but good I'll, enough to do that? to take four four headshots, bolt action rifle. And apparently, in. these like tests had been done. The, the Warren Commission got other Marine snipers to do the same thing, and they could do it, and they could do it in a better time. But it, ha- it was done again <clears> more recently, and they couldn't get anywhere near. No, that. has it ever been tried today? I don't know what like nowadays. Uh, now. I think I couldn't get. A, I couldn't actually get a source on this, but one person that had commented on this had said, "Yeah, it was done really recently, and they didn't come close. No, way. didn't come close to meeting that time." I'd love to know, like nowadays, what like the top whoever like the top sniper in the world is. Yeah, and you think like it's with, with that gun though, it's, it's so much older. Yeah. So maybe today snipers might be like good at using that gun. Maybe yeah. back then that they were the best. Yeah. You could argue that, but shit. it's just it just seems like so There's much had to go right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Holy shit. I like that. I like that theory a lot. That's a deep conspiracy. Oh, and it, yeah, there's so many more layers to that, that I had to skip over just to keep it brief. But like, <sighs> there's so many more people who could have been involved and other weird what things. What do you believe? I, I don't know. Mm. I believe that Oswald killed him. I think it was a shot from Oswald that killed him. Mm-hmm. All right. I'm not sure about the grassy no. I'm not sure if there was a second shooter or not, but I definitely don't believe he acted alone. Okay. I don't think he just decided I'm going to kill the president. Like, what would have happened had he missed? You know? That's it. Like, yeah, ha, ha, if he had missed, right? Yeah. And J- John F. Kennedy had to survive. If they would have went up, they would have found all of this stuff, and they would have said, you tried to assassinate the president. That's yeah. fine. Would he still have been shot by Jack Ruby I after know. being detained yeah. in custody? I think he would have. You do? Yeah. Wow. Even if he hadn't killed the president, I think that he had to be taken out because he was a risk because he knew something. What was about ever, a wider? Do you know plan. whatever became of uh, that guy Jack Ruby? Actually, I didn't get time to read up on him. No, I'd say he was let go pretty late. Possibly, I don't know. Fuck Can't six. comment on that. Oh my god! But he this is know, he took out the only person who knew for sure what, what happened. Yeah, and you think like, yeah, you know, it's just hard to know. It's, it's impossible to know for sure yeah. as well. Like, but a lot of people claim that you know that it's been debunked. That's it's been crazy. debunked. It was not a conspiracy. It was an assassination attempt. I'm not convinced because there's just yeah. too many, too much, too many angles, too many moving pieces, Chris. Yeah. Too many variables. Too many uh, fucking variables. That's crazy, D. That's a serious conspiracy. I put it into the firm pile. I like that. Yeah, because, I, I would um, agree. I think there's there's a lot more going on there than we are, have been led to believe. Yeah, hundred percent. That's really good, D. I really enjoy that. Um, I kind of don't even want to follow that. Thank that was you, that Chris. good. Thank you, Chris. It was very good indeed. But I am going to follow it. Yeah. It's one of my own. Yeah. That's not so much a conspiracy, but it's just something that, um, I don't know, I'm interested in this. There's a lot of doubt about it. Fuck, I'm interested in this big time, D. So uh, my kind of conspiracy, if you like, uh, is to do with the Madeleine McCann disappearance. Mm-hmm. So a bit of background, first of all. Yeah, let's go. Um, <laughs> Madeleine McCann, a child born on May 12th, 2003 in Leicester, England, to Jerry and Kate McCann, two upper class physicians. Um, I think that's all we really Doctors. have to say. Yeah. So the McCann family went on vacation along with their, along with seven other adults and their children to uh, Praia de Luz, Portugal. Uh, the resort in which they were staying at was described as a quote a boring concrete jungle infested with snobbish locals. Immediately, alarm bells start ringing there, D. Why, snobbish locals? Not mm. even that. A boring concrete jungle? Mm-hmm. Who the hell brings their kids to a boring concrete jungle? Okay, anyway. Bo- boring fucking middle class okay, yeah. English people. Um, before we go any further, let's, let's, let's state the facts. Let's state what we know of this case so far. Um, the McCann family go on holidays. It's the wind outside. Ah. It's crazy, isn't it? Um, Madeline McCann is abducted. Removed from her bed. Yep. Um, and to this day, she's never found. Yep. Basically, that's what we know. Um, I'll read on. The families all stayed in the same apartment complex. Um, it was a three-story building with the McCann family staying uh, in the ground floor, room five A. Uh, Madeline herself slept in a bed nearest to the window, um, while her two-year-old twin siblings slept in travel cots. I didn't know they were twins. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I did not know that. Yeah, there you go. Um, 
May 3rd, 2007, at approximately 8.30 p.m., Madeline and her younger siblings were put to bed. The adults left their children in the hotel and went to the resort's tapas bar, um, 155 feet from the hotel. Right. Um, it was so close that every so often the adults would take turns checking on their kids. Okay. Yeah. That, mm, okay. Should, they, should the kids I, have I mean, left alone? I know. I mean, you're in a foreign country. Yeah. I mean, is it only? I mean, do we think that now because this has happened? I think that's true. I think. I think back then, whenever like I was that mm-hmm. age, yeah, yeah. Back then, I think my parents probably would have probably said, yeah. "I'm gonna leave you there. I'm gonna come back in ten check minutes and check on you." There you go. Um, but night, maybe, maybe because it's a foreign country, not. Yeah, I know. That's the only thing. Yeah. At nine oh five, for sure that would happen. Yeah, I don't, yeah, at home, yeah. At nine oh five p.m., Jerry McCann, the father in question here, um, goes to check on his kids. Um, he noticed that the door was um, open wider wider than it had been when he left. So not only were they checking on their kids, but the door was still open. Mm. Um, at 9.15, Matthew uh, Oldfield checked the McCann apartment. This was one of the adults. Um, and saw that the twins sleeping, but did not remember if he saw Madeline. This is the first thing that kind of rings alarm bells. Because um, based off of the report that was given... Um, so picture this to you. I have a picture here, but to the people who are listening to the podcast that can't see the picture... When this guy walks into the room, the first bed right there that he sees would have been Madeline's. Right. The travel cots are at the far side of the room. Now, he, he states that he's seen the two twins sleeping. How the hell does he, he not, not see, yeah. you know, a three or four year old girl lying there sleeping? I don't know. Um, Matthew is a friend of the McCann's, um, but when checking the room, it was impossible for him not to see Madeline's bed. Therefore, he would have had to see her sleeping or not sleeping um, when he checked. At 9.15 p.m., a McCann friend um, named Jane Turner went to check on her own children and witnessed a man walking with a child in his arms. Um, at 10 p.m., an Irish family vacation. Sorry, what was that? So at 9.15, a McCann friend named Jane Turner, so one of the friends that were with her, um, went to check on her own kids. So obviously she left her kids as well. Um, she went to check on them and noticed a man in the resort carrying a small child in her Jesus arms. Jesus Christ. Thought nothing of it, checking her kids, whatever. Um, At 10 p.m., an Irish family vacationing in the resort saw a man carrying a child on the beach. God. Again, alarm bells here. Um, At 10 p.m., Kate McCann went to check. So the mother in question Mm -hmm. here went to check um, on her children. Madeline was no longer in her bed. Um, Kate ran back to the tapas bar, leaving the twins in their cots and yelled, and I quote, they've taken Madeline. They have. Mm -hmm. Now... Um, so there's a couple of different um, opinions or uh, you know conspiracies, whatever um, theories, if you like, as to what happened here. The three big ones are an intruder, a driver, and uh, she was murdered. Okay, so mm-hmm. I'm going to go through each one of them. D. Um, so theory number one, an intruder. Kate McCann said that when she arrived at the apartment at 10 p.m., she knew a crime had been committed because Madeline had been put to sleep with her favorite stuffed animal named Cuddle Cat. And Cuddle Cat had been moved out of Madeline's reach. Um, she so, didn't think... So who's seen this? Kate McCann. Right. 10 o'clock. Um, she didn't think Madeline had just wandered off without Cuddle Cat. This is obviously oh, a, a, okay. a cherished just, childhood, just, just, childhood um, you know, like teddy bear. Yeah, yeah. She wouldn't leave without it. Um, so she knew that Madeline wouldn't have got up and wandered off without it, supposedly. Um, so she believed that this was an abduction. Um, burglaries and robberies in the area... Um, which the McCanns were staying at had increased um, fourfold only a month prior to the rev- to their visit to the really? resort. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. Um, so it was it was kind of on the up and up for burglaries and and abductions, robberies, whatever. Um, so it is suspected that a burglar came in through the patio door. Now this is the patio door that, that the parents had been using yeah, to gain yeah. access to the apartment. Mm-hmm. Um, where Madeline was sleeping and was robbing the place when Madeline woke up out yeah, of her sleep yeah. um, noticed that this was this was going on so in this like panic in this haste the burglar picked up the child and left and yeah. this was um, the man then that was seen on the beach nearby did they, with the child the people who saw did they describe her as walking him, him as walking walking or through the resort mm. which is strange now I know to avoid can it, maybe to avoid yeah. suspicion you might yeah. walk but surely don't, I don't know if a man panicked like that would walk I know and surely the child 
would, would yeah crowd would be in in you know yeah. would be ragged you know um it had, this is this is just a little side note. It had, it has also been suspected that Madeline may have been abducted by a gang of pedophiles. Mm. Um, so, um, on top of that, one day, one day, a day prior to the to Madeline's disappearance, two men were seen prowling the resort, pretending to be charity collectors and going door to door trying to um, get guests to donate. They were spotted many times uh, that day. Um, on the day of the disappearance between 3.30 and 5.30. So the day of the disappearance, these two men posing as um, charitable collectors um, were spotted between half three and half five. Um, finally, it is speculated that Madeline was taken by two blonde men that many people th- think were trying to find a child for a wealthy, um, infertile couple. These two what? men, yeah, these two uh, men were seen walking um around the resort many days and spoke only in dutch they were staying in the room above 5a Ooh, that's interesting very interesting um the next theory then is the driver theory so this is what is yeah give me give me some background on this one guys so the driver theory um suggests that madeline woke up um while she was sleeping she went to find her parents um and wandered um onto the streets around the resort um, while she wandered out onto the road, she was struck. Oh, right. She was struck by, um, by a driver. Uh, the driver panicked and put her body into the car and drove off to hide it. I don't think, uh, though, that there's been actually been too much depth to support this theory. It was just one of the theories that crept up. Um, That's interesting. And the, the mother's claim, or Kate McCann's claim, is that she wouldn't have left the teddy bear. Exactly. And on top of that there... it. W- I think um, one of the things that kept popping up was Madeline's handprints weren't over any of the doors or stuff that she would have used to yeah, get out yeah. to gain access. Mm-hmm. Um, it was never it was never seen, so um, that that theory was kind of debunked. Now the biggest theory and the most common one is that um, she was murdered. Um, by the, whom? Yeah, murdered <laughs> by her parents is the biggest is the biggest one, which is is awful. We know, but. It's the Th- this is the one that kind of like the, it's so because halfway through the investigation it seemed like okay we're gonna go find her we're gonna go find her and then I just remember this from being like in school and stuff and it was just like oh actually we found like blood or something in the car yeah and we're like okay hang okay on. now we need to take the parents into custody yeah. and you're like what yeah so um let me see give me, give me the dates on this one Chris uh, okay so firstly. Um, the night of the of the disappearance, um, Kate says um, they've taken Madeline. So why would she make a statement? That's like one this? thing. Yeah, I noted that as soon as you yeah. said that. Why, why did she assume so quickly? Yeah, um, that she's been taken, exactly. not that she's missing. Exactly. Yeah. The exact point I was going to make: when someone isn't there, you don't say that um, they've been taken. You mm-hmm. say this person is missing, yeah. or they're yeah. not there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, how would she know that? Why would she say this? Um, this would only imply that um, not only has someone taken her, but more than one person. She said they have taken Madeline. <laughs> yeah, that's true. More as well. than one person has taken taken her daughter. Um, next, um, the next bit was that that night the McCanns did not search for Madeline. They didn't. They didn't search for her. What did no. they do? They just rang the police or something. They searched the apartment on the beach, um, but they didn't search again until six the next morning. So they searched immediately the area, they searched around the apartment and then the beach, and then that was it. They just kind of gave up and didn't search until six next morning, which is str- like, like I mean, look, none of us have kids. Yeah. But if someone goes yeah. missing, especially your child, you don't, you don't fucking, no. you don't stop searching. No. You know what I mean? Um, especially, what is it, like in the opening, I think I, I heard this somewhere, it's like, when someone gets like abducted like or the something. the first 24 hours or first 48 something hours. Something like that there. Yeah. That's like your window of opportunity. If you're yeah. going to find them, you have to find them then. Otherwise, yeah. they're they're more or less gone. Um, uh, Kate reported, so the mother reported Madeline missing around 10 p.m. but refused to answer the questions um, of authorities even after being told she was damaging the case. Pardon me. I mean, yeah, part of that you could put down there, she would be an absolute hysteric. I mean, that's not something you can even comprehend, losing a no, child. But no. at the same time, it's like... She needs to give every bit of evidence she yeah. can to help find her child, yeah. and she didn't. Um, this is what was said when an investigator asked her if she realized that by not cooperating, she was hindering the process. So this is the question. Are you aware that in not answering the questions, you are jeopardizing the investigation which seek to discover what happened to your daughter? And her answer was yes, if that is what the investigation thinks. Hmm. When, did she, when was this said? 
that was immediately that was the, that was one of the first things so whenever um you know she reported her missing they would have questioned her straight away and she wasn't given answers so straight away so that kind that's of that's a red flag that would be really, like I, i'd be thinking at that point you know maybe she at that point has kind of because i mean if if this theory is to believed is to be believed and you know the parents did it or whatever maybe at this point when it actually becomes so real she just becomes plagued with so much guilt so much fear that as soon as the questions start flowing mm. she can't answer them and that's so it's it. just like yeah it's just def- that yeah def- deflected yeah um so the police decided to recreate the crime scene which is often done to figure out um what it may have looked like during the time you know things like that. you've seen csi you've seen shows yeah, like yeah, that you yeah, know yeah. what goes on okay um so Despite being asked by police and investigators, um, Kate and Jerry McCann did not attend the reconstruction. Mm. Now, some people might say, you know, it's it was too just difficult, too difficult. But I mean, if this is to, you know, help in any way, to find any your child. any sliver of hope to help find your child, would you not be jumping you at that it. opportunity? You do, yeah. Um, so Jerry, the father, then claimed he did not leave the dinner table at the tapas bar for longer than five minutes at a time. However, this was contradicted when um, one of the friends who was also there told police that Kate was, quote, moaning about Jerry being gone for a long time watching mm. the football game. This means that Jerry's alibi was weak. Yeah. So Jerry was apparently gone watching a football game at the time. Um, and he stated to the police that he didn't leave the, t- the table where they're reading tapas for... Yeah, um, more than five minutes. More than five minutes. And the thing to remember is that there was a man spotted holding a child. Yeah, a child who was not screaming. Exactly. Um, speaking of an alibi, around the time that the man on the beach was spotted, um, when Kate found um, Madeline missing, it is not confirmed whether Jerry was at the table or whether he mm. was he had left the table. So, could Jerry have been the man carrying the child? Perhaps um, the family who saw the man on the beach say that they are eighty percent sure. That the man was Jerry, the father. Eighty percent. Eighty percent. That's a Fuck. big percentage to jump on. Well, is this the Irish family? Uh, yes, this is the Irish family. Um, also, Irish are very reliable. <laughs> you know, eighty um, like percent sure. There like. was a digital sketch done, um, and it pretty much came up as an exact lookalike of. Uh, well, the, the similarities were crazy. Mm. Um, this is mad. Like, the McCanns also lied to their friends back home in the UK. They told, he- they told them that the window in the apartment had been shattered and that Madeline was taken through the window. Um, the McCann's own lawyer had come out and said that there was no evidence of there ever have being a break-in. Why would they say something like that? I think that I can kind of understand. It's kind of like, Is that I they kind of cover up the fact that they left their they kids? They left the kids there. I don't know. I can see, like, you know, in the moment of kind of panic, it's like you don't want it to seem like I was a negligent parent and that's where my mm-hmm. child is gone. And you might just lie to, to try and convince yourself of that. Yeah, I can see how that might happen. Um, it's all the it's all the other things that make me doubt it so much. Yeah. Um. So a couple of days after the disappearance, um, one of the McCann friends went to the police, um, behind obviously the McCann's back or whatever, and told them that she witnessed Jerry and his friend David Payne, who was also at the resort, having a, having a discussion where they were talking very sexually and making sexual gestures about Madeline. I mean, that's not right. Like, now, like who? Uh, this is just this is weird now you know yeah. who the yeah. fuck does that and then why would the friend who was obviously with them kind of go behind and say this you know I don't know alarm bells are ringing all over the place in this one day um, the day after the disappearance a CPS employee of England named uh, Yvonne Martin called Kate and offered any help um, she could provide in what, what is oh, Child Protective Services CPS? yes okay. um so an employee of Child Protective Service in England named Yvonne Martin called Kate and offered any help she could in providing, um, she could provide in finding Madeline. Kate told Yvonne that her daughter was kidnapped by a couple despite no evidence of this. Oh. So now, now Kate yeah. has come out and saying, first of all, she's saying they've taken her. They have taken her. They have her. taken her. And now, despite no evidence suggesting it it's whatsoever, she's saying that a couple has taken her. Hmm. Where the hell is she plucking that from? Well, this is it. You know, where does that come from? Um, so Yvonne, this CPS uh, employee, um, went to the apartments in Portugal. She was also uh, on vacation there. She was speaking to them when David Payne started whispering in Jerry's um, ear and ushered the McCanns back to the apartments while telling Yvonne they didn't need their help. 
didn't need her help yeah. sorry yeah um Yvonne, Yvonne said that she felt like she knew pain and that though uh, her career in child protective services she recognized him even though she even wrote a letter to the british police saying she believes the parents were involved in the disappearance jesus yeah now this is someone who works for um child protective services yeah now she asked for police to look into david pain this this friend or whatever um, she claimed that David was wearing clothes similar to what the man on the beach was seen to have been wearing. Wearing, um, a, a fund was then set up for donations and helping to find Madeline. This fund helped raise thousands upon thousands of dollars. Uh, what did the McCanns do with it? They paid their mortgage with it. Did they? Yes, they did indeed. I mean, that that does look bad. <laughs> that, that looks fucking yeah. awful. You know, I mean, I don't know if I can justify that. And here, not... here are the donations of, of thousands of people to help find your daughter, and you're taking it to to pay for your house. Yeah, you want, I, like I, what? I, I'm trying to do like the mental gymnastics here to yeah. validate that to say like that. Oh, we needed to get rid of the stress. We needed to help. We need to be able to focus on Madeline finding her. But no, that's a bit much. Yeah. You don't fuck me. Like. I know. Um, on the 12th of May 2007, um, Madeline, which would have been Madeline's fourth birthday. Um, Kate wrote this in her book she published about the case that's a, that's a one thing as well this book that this they book, wrote yeah. which really fucks me up yeah. um, we ate mostly in silence concentrating on the kids I couldn't eat much and alcohol was completely off my agenda uh, Fiona recalls that Jerry and I were completely shut down that day barely able to talk and although, although our friends tried to remain cheerful and behave normally to get us through it we all felt awkward about being at this lovely villa in the sunshine in these circumstances there was no cake Jerry did attempt a toast, but he was visibly upset and couldn't manage more than, I quote, I can't even say happy birthday to my daughter before choking up. The, f- the physical loss was more intense than ever. I ached for Madeline. Now, she said this, but um, media snapped pictures of the couple at this dinner. Mm. And I will show you a picture, UD, of them. Now, these aren't people who look visibly distraught. These people look very cheerful, mm. laughing, smiling, holding balloons. Well, now, I understand this. This yeah. could have been taken at a different moment. A picture when he captures that. that you know, yeah, that, that moment. Um, but still. Um, and on the 29th, on May 29th, three weeks after Madeline's disappearance, the McCann couple went on a European tour to speak about Madeline. They left their twins in the 5A apartment with a nanny. Left them. Mm. In the same town Madeline was abducted from. But I know. They left, they left over a nanny. Yeah. Like. At least they were responsible that time. I don't know. I mean, still, would you? I mean, your daughter has just been taken from that exact place and you're just going to leave your other children with a nanny there. That's screaming out for media attention. For, I don't yeah. know. That, but I think that's just not being smart about the whole situation. No. I don't know if that's necessarily uh, like a... Like, I can't, we don't care about these kids yeah. kind of action. I think um, it's just kind of like... On the tour, the McCann's constantly rendered to Madeline as was, saying she mm. was so sweet, she was so perfect. Was implies that she is no longer alive, despite there being no evidence of her being dead. Mm. So why aren't they saying she is perfect? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or uh, she is... Um, yeah. So sweet. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, sorry, I missed that one. Um, next was a big one for me, D, actually. This cuddle cat that Madeline couldn't sleep without. Um, so this is her childhood. You know, every child kind of has yeah, that one thing. Yeah, you have a thing, thing yeah. yeah. Um, Kate, um, after the disappearance, Kate McCann was rarely seen without Madeline's favourite toy, which was cuddle cat. Um, she kept it because it had the scent of her daughter on it. Um, so the McCanns were then... Um, informed of the investigations that were going on and what was going to be done and how proceedings were going to follow with the Portuguese police, with Mm -hmm. the investigation team. 17 days before the police brought canines to investigate the crime scene, um, Kate washed Cuddle Cat. Of course she did. Destroying precious forensic evidence. Mm -hmm. Um, Had Kate's story about Cuddle Cat uh, being moved was true, this ruined, ruined any chance of ever finding the abductor's scent. Like... First of all, who the hell washes like if it had the scent of your daughter who's no who's if it's missing. something that was involved in a crime scene, yeah, you, your first in, your first inclination is to not touch it. Yeah. But this, to, like, is, this is the last it. bit of their daughter that they have supposedly. You know why the hell would you wash that? Why would you take away that one last remaining piece of her? You know, to just be left with like the smell of like you know I don't know, fucking Lenore or something. Yeah, yeah. You know? 
Why would you do that? I don't know. So the dogs came in, day, and um, couldn't find anything. I assume the police had been uh, had one dog trained to sniff out blood, and uh, one trained to sniff out a body. The dog sniffed out blood on Madeline's toys behind the apartment couch, in the bedroom, the wardrobe, the patio door, the rental car key, and in the car itself. That's the one. There you go. Um, the cadaver dog found the scent of death in the wardrobe, the patio, behind the couch, the steps leading down the patio, the bedroom, the back garden, two pieces of Kate's clothing, one of Madeline's t-shirt, and even to cuddle cat. Mm, God. Yeah. So everything about what the, like dogs cannot lie. They're trained to do their <laughs> well, job. Yeah, yeah, One yeah. is trained to, send, to to sniff out death, the other blood, and they like, both come hand in hand. It's like, how reliable are they? True, but I mean, they're both just, finding the sense yeah, in the same it's when You start adding these things up, so yeah. both the dogs find these things. Yeah. All the inconsistencies, the fact yeah. that they washed the, what's it, cuddle cat? Yeah. It's just, when you start adding all these things up, it just gets so, yeah. so weird. So when the dogs were also taken down at the time to the rental kind of garage or whatever, all the cars that were there, they were able to single out the McCann's and to the trunk, mm. to the to the boots, and that's where the smell of death and blood was. Hmm. I don't know. Or was it just the smell of Madeline as well? Like True. You know, it's so... I know. Um, but this so is the one that started raising like, like international suspicions about yeah. what, like, what happened. What the hell like. went on. Um, so the other theory is that they sold her into sex trafficking. Uh, there's a huge speculation that Madeline was simply pawn, a pawn to her parents. She was born and raised simply to be sold into trafficking. That was... Ma- that was that Madeline was groomed until she was the right age for a pedophile willing to pay a big money to have her. Fuck. Um, as horrible as the sound, the shit that was going on in the world, which is just fucking weird. Um, there's interviews of Kate McCann speaking about how, um, quote, round and compact Madeline was as a baby. She talked about um, Madeline's, quote, perfect little gentles, <laughs> which is a strange kind of fucking uh, yeah. piece of information to share. Um, and then in the home video that Jerry is seen recording, he keeps zooming zooming in on Madeline um, and, and says, and I quote, ah, yes, and quote, smile for daddy. And makes Madeline twirl around and keeps smiling at him while he's being while he's um, being quite creepy, basically. You know I mean? yeah. Now, yes, the, yeah. I think it's been misconstrued. Yes, of course. You know, he is a father at the end of yeah. the day. You know, whatever. Um, police told Jerry and Kate not to release a photo of Madeline with her eye deformity showing because um, because she was kidnapped. Her unique mark mark might scare her abductor into killing yeah, her yeah. because obviously she's easy to identify um but what did the mccann's do yeah they, released, they released the most look into my prolific yeah. fucking image they could madeline's face we've all seen it she's in the red shirt and mm-hmm. the, the big scar in her eye or in her eye or yeah, whatever yeah. why would you do that why would you go against what authorities <laughs> are telling you to do yeah now, here's the other big thing with this theory. Um, a famous chef by the name of Sir Clement Froude uh, lives in the aisle, not far from the resort where the McCann's were staying. Not a big deal until you find out he's a pedophile. Uh, yeah. Been done for it before. Nice. Um, and his distance between his house and the resort is minimal, basically. A couple of streets over. Mm. Um, is he like imp- implicated in all this then? Well, this is the thing. So it might not be such a big deal because pedophiles can live anywhere can live everywhere um well two months before two months after sorry madeline went missing jerry and kate mccann went to his house and had dinner with him oh that's very 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 strange isn't it yes um they were invited again but weren't allowed to go because they were then at first they weren't but when they were invited again they were then suspects in the case and weren't allowed to go um so what could have happened is that basically mccann's planned um this whole thing uh but not very carefully they invited all their other rich friends and families to come on vacation with them um to this resort to meet this man near their customer or whatever the chef um the huge amount of kids that were with them would have acted as kind of like a camouflage for madeline you know it could have been any one of these kids anything could have happened so they pull um this whole oh there's too many kids um Oh, it's just so grim to talk about it. Isn't it? Yeah, I know. Uh, then they went to the tapas bar and gave the chef the signal to make the payments and go into their Fuck. apartment to do as he pleased Fuck. with Madeline. But uh, things got too heated and he murdered her. So they said, don't worry about it. We've got us. And they cleaned up the chef's mess. 
uh, even if it meant they had to hide her body in the wardrobe while everybody searched for her and when the coast is clear they put her into a car and dumped her um, and the reason that Jerry was gone for so long quote watching football because he was cleaning up the chef's mess and when he returned um, Kate left and returned to making um, a scene to set up the idea that Madeline had then been taken um, so yeah that's the big kind of fucking theory with that one D. is there not a theory as well though that they just they just killed her like something happened they killed her yeah this, this is, is the thing that always kind of struck with me because I, I just I, a really simple kind of concept. i just think like it happened like it, something happened something yeah. went wrong they, yeah they did something that ended up killing the child yeah all these parents out you know they're yeah. they're they're socializing you know they're having a couple of drinks things are going well maybe i don't know i it's hard it's so hard to think of this though because it is a child yeah but I, like you say it could have been something simple maybe the child you know someone goes up to invest check on the children maybe what a child's acting up maybe something's going just on something happens a simple slap a push you know bang of the head the child just gets knocked out it, it just doesn't escalates seem the way, i don't know the only way you're talking about like how it could have been planned and planned it just doesn't seem like the type of thing you know why would you bring all your friends if you're planning to do all this you know if she knew if kate mccann knew she was well, gonna have to stage a kidnapping like you know could they not have you know could they not have done it without all their friends there, you know, or were they all complicit? It just kind of seems like a like a one of one of those like spur of the moment things. Maybe the friends were there Something as happened. like the the perfect, well, what they thought was the perfect cover up. You know, we're taking loads of people with us, so there's no possible chance we would no. ever do something well, like this yeah. because this you is know. True too. Um, I I do have like I have I, there are serious concerns. I have serious yeah. suspicions with this case. I mean, about, uh, it's just about their involvement and why they were so exactly difficult. It's about shady. It. I mean, why would they not do everything? I this is the thing that bugs me. If your child goes missing, yeah, why do you not throw everything at it to find the child? Every possible sliver. You know, here is every bit of fucking scent. Here is every bit of money. Here is every bit of our time. No, we'll not report the case. We'll wash yeah. all the forensic science. We'll it, hide just, the evidence. It's just too weird. Like Man, there's shit going on with that. And I don't know what it is. It's grim to think because... It's just tragic. Like, it's so awful. Like. I like to think that maybe she's still alive. Maybe she was sold as, you know, for, no. for fucking sex or whatever. And that she's still alive and one day she'll show up. But the harsh reality is probably think, that she won't. I think she was killed. Like, yeah. And I don't know if it was... Sorry, I don't know if it was by the McCanns that night or if it was she was taken but then killed because her picture had been put out and it was so obvious. She was, like, I mean, put it this way, right? Mm -hmm. There's no way, there's no way in hell that you can take that child out again after what happened. No. It was, it's the it's the biggest case of a kidnapping yeah. of all oh, time. 100%. Yeah. So, like, if someone did genuinely kidnap her and it just had happened exactly as the McCanns yep. said it happened, then there was no choice left for no. whoever did the kidnapping. It would as, just as be awful, kill and dispose. Yeah, they did, yeah. they did the unthinkable. But, but I mean, look. Did you ever hear that um, a couple of years ago, that whole thing in Cleveland about the guy who kept the three women in his house? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that yeah. was 16 years or something like that that them women were kept there. 16 years? The whole Dave. Fritzl thing? I, yeah, yeah, Fritzl. There's Fritzl, Fritzl, yeah. Like, no, How long like, was that going on for? These you things do these happen. These things can yeah. be covered up. Um, but like that, like with a death, if you kill someone... How like how long is it before mm. before they're found? I don't know. It's just so it's, uh, it's really fishy. Like I don't know. This is the one thing I don't know if the McCanns could have if they did kill Madeline mm -hmm. and they had to get rid of the body. I don't think they could have done that successfully with no. the amount of media coverage. No. So I think either there was people helping them. Oh yeah. Again, it's it's like the JFK thing. There was probably like another source there. Yeah. Um, There's more there. I think I think after hearing all this and reading much about it maybe it was something like, like that that maybe they went to sell her or sell her mm. services oh, to whoever for a hell of a lot of money um you know it's it's evident that they used the money that they got from funding from donations to pay their mortgage i mean they're two physicians mm. they so don't really well paid, like. yeah exactly why the hell would you take your kids to a concrete jungle you know so you're you're coming down on the side of it that they were involved yeah. and it was to do with money, yeah, well possibly human trafficking. Human, tra oh yeah, human trafficking. Yeah, of course. Um, that uh, maybe she was sold on, and then like that, um, mm -hmm. maybe she was 
left back in such a state and she was God. killed or she was killed and like that they said fuck it we'll cover this up i don't know um either way there was no there was no evidence ever shown of of them um coming into contact with a lot of money um although this whole media this from from what's happened i'm sure like the amount of money that they've made i mean books that they've released are fucking weird like the fact that you released the book it just really just it just just it irks me even I the guess. way they speak of their daughter as well in the books it's so fucking weird like some of the shit they they've say they've become I celebrities don't. out of it this yeah, is it's just exactly. strange like and um i really just don't yeah i don't like the mccann's i just don't no. believe them no. i can't relate to them There's i understand if, if this is true and like the unspeakable awful thing has happened to them then like oh you know that it's just that, that is awful but yeah. i can't no there's just something about yeah, them that seems off to me. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Man, it's big. It's a big fucking conspiracy there. That's something that we're not going to find out. I, d- I hope we find out very soon what has happened. I don't think we ever One ever way will. or another, whether she's dead or whether she's alive, I'd, yeah. I'd like there to be a bottom line. As you said, though, it's like one of those things, if you don't find them, if if, if you don't, don't get a lead within like the first 48 hours, gone. the chances of you it's ever gone. finding it are yeah. gone. Like, so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, who knows? Maybe in like 10 years' time, you know, someone will be like, holy shit, you yeah, battling like, McCann? Yeah, and there we go. Possibly, but, but I I yeah. feel like whoever if Madeline McCann was out there yeah. still alive, she would know who she is. Do you think? I don't know. At a young age, as a child, maybe three, four years old, like you can be brainwashed but at that with age. The, with the eye thing, mm. I think you'd work it out, man. I think you'd work it out. You would have heard of Madeline McCann. You would have, you know who you are. You know what you look like. You know. Fuck, I don't know. I don't know. But um, yeah, I don't think personally, I don't think we'll ever ever find out ever what happened. No. I don't. I think the only way we would is if the McCanns were involved and one of them speaks out, or they read in their memoirs whenever they die. That's the only way I think we'll ever find out. I don't. Otherwise, if it was genuinely a kidnapping, we're never ever going to find out. That's my opinion. It's grim, isn't it? Really, it's a a, yeah, it's It's a heavy topic, fucking heavy one to jump in with. But But um, it was a it was a big one. I remember whenever we were young, it was such a big one. To be fair, I never took any interest in it until up to like a couple of years ago. At first, it was always like, oh, yeah, she was taken. Yeah. But I never read any more into it. And then as more and more evidence started coming out, suggesting that the parents were involved, and it was like, holy yeah, shit, yeah. why would someone do this? And I was like, oh. I just remember whenever I was young, and like it happened, and it was like, because we were fairly young then as well. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I remember being in school, and we were told one yeah, morning that, yeah. that this girl had been taken. And I was like, holy shit, okay. But then shortly after that, it was in the whole, whenever the McCann's became suspects. And then that has, maybe that's just always been ingrained in my memory from when I was young. Like They were they were suspects they were mm-hmm. involved and so that's just stuck in my head that they were so and maybe that's what's influenced me to be sort of like I would be yeah. on the I would be of the opinion that they know more than they know more than they're, than they're letting on, on. Yeah. yeah I don't know I don't know too good yeah. um, too good uh, really really deep uh, conspiracy, conspiracy to start with I mean every episode of this conspiracy kind of series that we do is going to be deep I don't think there's any conspiracies yeah, that yeah. we can jump in with that is but I mean there's a couple light. there's a couple that, there's a couple there which maybe don't involve as much death <laughs> both of both of ours have centered around around a possible well in death killing case, a murder, actual murder murder and with yeah. McCann unspeakable things regarding a child murder yeah yeah um, so um but yeah that's the two for this week um i think i think one of the next ones i definitely want to cover is the moon landing moon landing with roswell 9 11 they'll yeah. all be brought up see i got some serious yeah, shit you got, yeah yeah i we love that and uh, what's under the vatican <laughs> oh, I got so much to talk about, dude. <laughs> yeah, I got so What's much to talk about. <laughs> well, there's some shit under the Vatican, let me oh, tell you. For damn sure. Um, but let us know what you think of uh, both those both those cases, because um, I don't know. There's more there than mm-hmm. than uh, than mm-hmm. we we could. I mean, we could have talked about this all night, D. That, yeah. was, that was just keeping yeah. it brief. We, we I had guess. to keep it brief. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so thank you for listening. Um, let's finish up with something a bit lighter this week. Okay. Tell me what food you at this week. I knew you were going to say uh, that. I have to think ask. about food. Um, Chris, I've had, we've been eating a lot of takeaways recently. And it's been excellent. I've had Domino's. Oh, Chris, did I show you the picture of uh, of the chocolate pizza I got at Domino's? No. Is it good? Oh my God. man. Is it good? It looks good, doesn't it? I don't know. Um, it does taste really good. Okay. And I, I know I can't share it. People who are um, obviously fucking watching or listening to this can't see what I'm about to show Chris. But just take my word for it. It looks absolutely nothing like it does on the box. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> so what? I'll I'll describe what I'm looking at. Yeah. It's like a it's like a piece of uh, of bread, and you've taken an Easter egg and you've set pieces of chocolate on top of the bread. 
and you've missed out a very large portion of the bread. <laughs> That's then, what it looks like. And then like. you just stuck the whole thing in the microwave. Where's that from? That's from Domino's. You're joking. Yeah. I will say this. It actually does taste good, even if it does look like the presentation oh, is awful. That looks like it, shit. It tasted good, man. Yeah? Yeah. So, uh, like I said, had a lot of Domino's, double cheese for the win. Um, Obviously. Italian? No. No? Are you Sta- back to classic? Sta- standard base. Ooh, I, like, I like the Italian. And I know, yeah. Uh, I like it as well. I'm trying to hold back in the calories. Mm. But here, what else do we have? Are you still intermittent fasting? Jesus, no. I was listening to Joe Rogan today, and uh, Joey Diaz was talking about how he can't intermittent fast. And I just thought, no. I must talk to Dee. I, mean, about I still don't eat breakfast, so I never start eating until about one in the day. So I kind of kind of intermittent fast. I've, I've had like two or three times about one in the day. <laughs> <laughs> so fucking hungry in the morning. <laughs> um, what do we have? Oh god, I had it in my head now. I can't think of it. We had a we had a happy dog, which is like a hot dog, like with a bunch of stuff on top That's of it, great. and these messy fries with like cheese. You told and me sauce. about that place before. I think you said you got it delivered before. Yeah. Did you get this one delivered again? Yeah. Was it good? It was cold. Yeah. Ish. Was it cold again? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. Maybe they just do cold food. Five guys. Five guys. Yeah, unreal, isn't it? Oh, it's so good. Yeah. Got, a, got a regular fries, Chris. Did you get that delivered? And, like, could have fed a fucking family of four. Did you get that delivered? <laughs> no one got that. Whereabouts? Got hot. What one? The one, the only one in Belfast is the Oh, right, Belfast, yeah, yeah. Because there's a Five Guys opening in Rushmere now. Is there? Yeah. I've seen that, and there's a, yeah. an Amanda's as well. Amanda's, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, Five Guys is awesome. Did you get a shake? No. Should I got a shake, man? Didn't love a shake. Had a Friar Tux recently as well, Chris. Did you? Got the old Chicken Supreme and the Strawberry Shake. The, the, the Strawberry Shake complements it, So it? well. It has to it's go this, with it. Yeah, it just, it works. Kind of one without the just, other. Oh, yeah. It's so good. Um, yeah, like I've been eating a lot of takeaways. Chinese is that sounds terrific. Has been good. Wow, uh, hasn't been good in the old gut, but it's I been have good not had it anywhere near as much as that. Day. I had a Domino's. Mm. I went half and half Italian. I had half uh, meteor, half double cheese. I like the double plain cheese. cheese. There's plain cheese. Nice. Nice. Um, yesterday I had an Ellen's for the first time in a very oh, yeah. long time. Our local what chippy takeaway. I had a Philip Burger yes. chip and uh, some curry sauce. Philip Burger is so good. Or Phillip it used to be so very, good. Very, very good. Um, I mean, yeah, this was okay. Yeah. Okay. It was just okay. Yeah. I was very, very fucking hungry yesterday coming home. So that's just what I grabbed today. Have you tried the new pizza place in Gary? That one? No. no. I've been tempted. They deliver to the house here. And I'm just like, I want to make use of that service. Someday. But I just, yeah. Someday I don't know. Because I had a Domino's and I was like, Domino's is good. Domino's is good. Yeah. Charlie Even when you Domino's. take it out the road, it's still pretty good. Um, today I had, I went for a bagel bean. Oh yeah. It was ba- very good. Nice. My first one in a very long time. I've never had a bagel bean. I, I've had bagels. I've had Bagel Legend out of Newry, which is now closed. Yeah. R.I.P. R.I.P. in days. Um, my brother thinks it's overrated, as do a mm. lot of people. I think it's... Um, Weird. appropriately rated oh fair enough um i had today a bc classic melt with uh chocolate brownie milkshake and so bacon cheese bc and fuck crack. you know what that that might be what that sounds for i know the crack because uh, they, they had the exact same thing in bagel legend bacon chicken cheese lettuce sweet chili mayo very very nice, good nice. very good indeed um what else have i had i'm definitely sure i had something else and I cannot think of it. It must not be important. <laughs> no. It would be right at the of top it. of your memory. Did you do those. anything for Halloween? Uh, no. No. Did absolutely nothing. Good. Um, Good. Do you like Halloween? Played some blops. Did you have any <laughs> trick-or-treaters? No, actually. No. I didn't think that. We had fireworks going off very, very close. The uh, entire of our ma went into blackness. Did it... Did intentionally or no there was, was a there was like a pa- there was like rolling power outs. Oh, man. That would have been pretty cool, though, for the fireworks and stuff. I guess. Going. We didn't have it here, but Arma had it and yeah. surrounding areas had it, but we didn't have it here. Um, I was working Halloween night. It was, it was fucking chaotic day. Busy, yeah. Oh, it was stupid busy. Like, people coming in, like, we closed at 6 o'clock on Halloween night. People were coming in at 5 o'clock looking costumes. Like, mm. If you don't have mm. your fucking costume now, you're not getting it. I was like, no. I was like, I'm getting this off the shelf. I'm getting Christmas out. Christmas starts tomorrow. Boom. Yeah. Not a chance day. No way. Like, if you don't have it would now, you, I'm sorry. Not, if I came in looking, would you not sort me out? No. I'm sorry. Not rules are rules, Dave. Fair enough. Fair I'm not enough. going back through boxes and <laughs> showing you what we have. Like, you know, fair no, enough. this isn't Jonesboro. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, that's all I've done with my week. It's been a very unproductive, well, I say unproductive week. Um, I got a question this week, D, um, from a guy I used to go to uh, from tech with. He kind of just, he just asked, was I still training um, the way I used to or was I too busy with the podcast? 
And I just thought, it's nice that people may think that this podcast takes up a lot of time. Yeah. But in reality, it only takes up about three hours of our week. We give the impression it takes up a lot more time. I think so. I yeah. wish it took up more time. You see, a lot of people, whenever they edit their podcast, they listen through it and they get rid of all the little, like, artifacts, the little mm. mistakes, they cut out the pauses, the silences, mm-hmm. they wrap it up in a nice little oh, package yeah. and they put it up there. We don't do that so no, much. No, we don't. We kind of go with a, an unedited, uninterrupted... Yeah, yeah. Um, a stream of consciousness. A stream podcast. of consciousness. I love that. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? I think you should get it in the banner. The Empty Promise podcast. I think we should get a banner. A stream of consciousness. Yes. Yeah, conscious thoughts. I don't know. Yeah. No, but to answer that question, no. Um... I'm still training. Um, <laughs> this does not take up very much time at all. I wish it took up a bit more time. Yeah, yeah. Um, to be fair, could we, could we, could we ever do two a week? Do you think? No, no. I think if we, if we're gonna put more time into it, we should just do more editing and or more timestamps and things. That's it. Like I think, I think the quality of our service could improve. Yeah. Not yeah. so much the quantity. Yeah, that's what we're um, gonna focus on. We don't even get let's plays out anymore. <sighs> I've had a couple of ideas of videos to do around the holiday season. Um, one of which, let's just say, involves. No Time for Caution, the Interstellar soundtrack. Awesome, awesome. Um, but apart from that, no. I'm excited. I have no, yeah, I have no um, inklings to do any more. I mean, we could do more podcasts, but I mean, will we just be firing like, yeah. shit on top yeah. of shit? Maybe we could start doing like Let's Plays where we just do a pod, a, a mini podcast over the top of a game that we're playing. Like Tomb Raider that time? Yeah, like Tomb Raider that time. It was very fun. Let's actually. get a little topic and we run. Can you believe that it's coming up to December, which normally means I play Tomb Raider? Oh yeah, are you going to? I thought about this, D. Two years ago, I did the 12 Tombs of Christmas Challenge, mm-hmm. and um, I failed, and I had a lot Watching of time on my hands. Nowadays, I don't have so much time. Oh, yeah. Speaking of which, this should have helped. <laughs> time management magic? <laughs> yeah. I haven't read this yet. By uh, Tim Cockerell? Lee oh, Cockerell. I knew it was very, a tree that Very, 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 very good author, I guess. Um, I'm reading his other book at the minute. Guy used to work for Disney, used to run Disney for 10 years that's a Fair lot enough. of interesting stories he used to manage 70,000 employees at one time how does how do you even do that like, I mean you gotta be good at what you do you have to be good um, I think that's it I don't think I, I need to touch on anything else this week I'm I'm holding back a serious uh, P so am I yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I would have wrapped up over 20 minutes ago probably if I was, if I was running this because yeah. I am Borsten. I'm not going to say what I was going to say right then. That would have been so inappropriate. That's wonderful. Um, this has been the Empty Promise Podcast. Um, Conspiracy special numero uno. Numer- there you go. Perfect. Uh, we hope this podcast finds you well. Um, remember, you can find this one and all the previous podcasts, video versions over at youtube.com slash Um If you want the audio versions, take us with you on the go. Uh, find them over at Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, Audio Boom. Podcast Addicts, uh, Google Podcasts, Jesus, yep. any fucking... All of those. Yeah, except SoundCloud. No, not it. We don't believe in SoundCloud. No, we no. do believe in it for one podcast every season. Every season. Yeah. And we do believe in Harvey Dent. We do. But we don't I believe love in Harvey SoundCloud. Dent. Harvey. Harvey. Um, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thank you so much for joining us this week. Um, it's been a pleasure. Uh, we'll see you all next week. Bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. Goodbye and God bless. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.